Welcome back to a shocking surprise as Sunday's party, still with no party uh, name or um, truly an you know, elaboration as of this point. Um, the uh, the party last time, what, four weeks ago? What, uh, Kez, you were, what was that? That was the end of last month, right? Was the last time you were with us? Mm. Roughly, because I think it was the weekend before the last weekend. I think so. Like yeah, so about, we come back after a bit of almost a month break in, <laughs> from April to May. Um, we return. Not all party members are here today. Dom will be uh, subbing out, doing uh, their own adventuring and uh, thereabouts, while the rest of the party continues their jo their mission. And the last time we left off, this party managed to, well, it should take advantage of the, uh, the night uh, with uh, all of the undead rising and the attacks and screams going on. Um, with just Kicks having uh, managed to, uh, if I remember correctly... Yeah, that was last session. I'm trying. I was gonna say, yeah, it was the hotel situation. Uh, with uh, Jakix having managed to uh, steal, take the bucket from uh, the party, uh, the party found themselves basically without uh, much ability to turn it down after a near suffocation of the entirety of the inn that they were staying at. Um, though a small issue would come up with uh, Aldrin. A quick help with Z uh, from Zilpip and some quick thinking would cause the mercenaries who had been inspecting the would-be, uh, let's say thief in this situation, um, for, uh, as they would, or, where was, uh, excuse me, um, with Zilpip helping out, uh, Uldren from escaping a sticky situation with them from the mercenaries as, at, while well, acting as a thief, uh, stealing from the wagon that had been abandoned in the middle of the road. The party would unfortunately find themselves waking the next day um, to spend their entire day traveling throughout the city, gathering information as many of them split up, learning bits and uh, bits about the town as they did so. Though Kez was not there, uh, the party would learn that uh, the library or the library at the, I believe it was the rustic. Yeah, the Rustic Brass School um, was known to house information on the creature that Dom and the rest of the party had agreed to hunt, the Zill themselves. With that, the party had made a deal with the library or one of the assistants of the library at the school to re-arrive at midnight with Kessinok in tow, while the two would be off exploring the campus and being shown around. Uh, the rest of the party had planned to go into the library and re do their research. However, Due to some unfortunate, unforeseen uh, circumstances, the party had uh, had forgotten uh, fully about their rendezvous and decided to instead spend their night in the inn, relaxing and sleeping through it. We come back to the next day, where now with Dom having vanished with a simple note on uh, in Kezanok's bunk saying that he'd be back later uh, with some with something that he was looking into. We find Kez, Ned, and Aldrin all gathered down at the first on the first floor of the inn. Coffee kind of set out. Uh, what looks to be free rations, kind of uh, or free food provided to each of you, um, given this uh, what, after hearing about the truth behind your kicks uh, and the bar owner being very ecstatic about you lot trying to protect the inn, or at least that's how they took it. Um, Breakfast and meals seem to be kind of given to you free of board as you lot gather together, sitting to down. Um, Zilpip, I imagine, still cur currently off uh, talking and dealing with someone currently in the background. Um, you three are kind of left alone. All right. So, uh, we got to go to this library, right? This is um, kind of just been told this recently. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the Zill, which um, wasn't on the quest list, the quest board. Uh, I will say, uh, Kez, as you think for a moment, as you say this, you remember Dom uh, finding out that there were Zill in the area of where these flowers, or where the flowers were, and that was the quest that you all had agreed to look into. Uh, specifically, the Rosmium, Lesmium, and Plemlium flowers. Yes! But someone told me that the name of the creature was on the quest board, oh, and it was not. Fair enough. No, I just quest board. 
Yeah, I knew the quest. I just didn't. It, whatever. <laughs> um, but yes. All right. So, Dom said uh, we could probably go to the library uh, to look up stuff on the Zill. Told me that I was gonna have to meet someone there. Don't know anything about that. So, uh, yeah. Unless we have literally anything else to do, um, let's get on with it. Oh, uh, and Mr. I mean, DM, the information of my, uh, research. Oh, yes, I forgot to PM you that. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, as you, uh, kind of, uh, go dig through your notes, um, you have find out that the city itself is currently in the midst of a rather large, what looks to be, um, influence from uh, an outside gang or group that seem to be anti-monsters. Um, a group or organization called uh, the Deadly Smiles, uh, said to be led by a similar figure who you find out is rumored to be a necromancer, who many of the townsfolk have been kind of whispering and speaking about. Um, as uh, kind of part of this uh, organization, and the reason these undead keep kind of rising up. Um, you, uh, as you continue to kind of poke around throughout the town, you pick up that there are four uh, key groups specifically of necromancers, all that seem to come together under a single person known as the Horned Devil himself. Um, no one seems to know the guy's name, what he looks like, they all just call him the Horned Devil. Um, these four groups throughout the city, um, you know two of them use uh, different bones to signify their operations throughout the town. Um, one specifically uses troll bones and the other uses owlbear bones. The other two seem to be completely a mystery and unknown where they are um, or anything else about them. Uh, last of what you get is that most of the, those who work within the cult all seem to carry one, a bone of their necromancers like client, uh, organization. Uh, for example, those who are part of the troll bone will carry like a troll skull or something of the sort to mark them out. Um, beyond that, uh, you don't get much else uh, as it seems much of the town seems to be pretty quiet and the black market seems to be kind of shattered and thrown apart as you look through the back streets. Um, much of the business that was there on the first day you arrived here seems to have quieted down almost to a dead stop. Hmm. Well, it's a start. Uh, nonetheless, we've got a library to do research on Zill. And, uh, I guess I have to have a conversation with, uh, some random librarian lady? I don't know. Uh, because, uh, Dom mentioned their name to be Ingrid before, uh, taking off. Ingrid, what a, what a beautiful name. Oh, boy, here we go. At least it's not another guy. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just as terrified, if not more. I don't know why. I have a bad feeling about this. Not like a danger yeah, feeling. I would just hope that the little fella doesn't find out. You know, gods rest her soul if uh, Zilpip finds out. But to be honest, I still don't know what she wants with me in the first place. It could be harmless. Uh, but, uh, we won't find out by sitting here. I, I don't know what, Dom didn't really exactly, uh, Dom, when were we supposed to go over there? Because he never exactly gave us a uh, time, like, uh. Uh, you ask me out of character or in character? Uh, technically in character, or has Dom already left? No, Dom left already, yeah. Uh, and Dom, uh, right. did tell the part, right, or did tell Aldrin and Ned prior, uh, to the meeting that you all, in, like, in session, that you all were going to meet, uh, Ingrid that night. Um. Gotcha, but I wasn't there to hear that. No, you okay. weren't there for, uh, to hear it, no. So they, they told them, and then you were expected to basically be picked up, and then, unfortunately, they all slept through the night and didn't go. Alright, uh, uh. About that. Uh-huh, yeah. But, I mean, he's a librarian, so if you go to the library, and, and I just, like, gesture. All right, let's get a move on, then. <laughs> All right. As you kind of swallow down the rest of your breakfast, uh, finishing up, um, the, uh, the bar owner, um, kind of smiling at you as you leave, uh, as she kind of waves uh, away for a moment, 
Um, you see the slightly sad tear on her face uh, as she sees you lot leave. Um, and if, uh, something strange to it a little bit, almost as she came, seems to stare at you longingly um, as the three of you walk out of the, of the uh, inn itself. I get the feeling we should never return. Uh, why? I just don't like the way I'm being stared at right now. I uh, get used to it. It happens to me every day. Really? I, yeah. I'm big and green, and I don't normally get stared at. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. Um, um, yeah. I wish you luck, and I like pat Kez that's because you're not. That's because, because you're not a... Myself. Wait, wait. because you don't look like a woman, Ned. <laughs> wait, uh, Ned... I'm doing catcalling. <laughs> oh, God. Ned, what did you, what, what did you say? <laughs> pat Kez on the shoulder, and then, like, step to the side a few steps, like, distance myself enough the stairs go to them. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, as you distance yourself, uh, yeah, backing up. Now, uh, out of curiosity, you guys do have a cart. Are you taking your cart and the, uh, the mule with you to, uh, or, sorry, not mule, dire wolf with you to the, uh, library, or are you just walking there? I mean, it's gonna take a very long time to walk there. Oh, yeah, but half a day, roughly. Yeah, so you, we're taking the cart. Okay. Uh, and then who's driving the cart? Because I know Ned and the dire wolf have become, uh, kind of bros throughout this adventure. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ned, you got this. I, I Yo, will, what's uh, this strange uh, eye doing back here? Oh, yeah. Don pointed that out. Um, he seemed to think that we were being watched, but I don't know. All I could figure out that it was magic. Huh. And it's not, like, doing anything? It's just there? Uh, as yeah. you look, it just seems to float. Yep. Hmm. In all my, uh, 700 years, haven't seen that one before. Oldrin, I assume, well, are you, uh, are you also tagging along, or are you planning to go off and, uh, do something else? Uh, seeing as my clothes have already been dyed and my attire changed, I will be tagging along, uh. Okay. Do you want to describe your new, uh, new appearance now to the rest, or to Ned and, uh, uh Kizanok? Yeah, I will find the images and post them. Uh, yeah, screw you, images. listeners! No, I will describe it, of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, but for the ninja attire, it's dark blue uh, robes uh, with a black undershirt. Um, on my arms are... I want to say or describe it as claws for, like, climbing, um, as well as on my boots uh, to help assisting in climbing up. Uh, my standard tux has been dyed as, um, a darker blue uh, with a red, or I believe it's a white shirt. I need to find the image. I will say, as uh, as you'll see Aldrin's new look, um, kind of, as you've been looking around, something that's caught your attention, both Ned and Kez, uh, as you've been, uh, kind of coming out here, since yesterday, um, there are a lot of shingles kind of laying on the ground, cracked and broken, all about this, like, uh, road as you come out, um, kind of swept off to the side, but you count 15, maybe 20 of them, uh, laying about, um, kind of cracked or in one way or another. <laughs> Hmm. Do the undead know how to roof hop now? <laughs> you know, uh, listen, I know one person who is definitely able to roof hop. I'm glad I slept on the ground floor. Uh, honestly, I regret my decision staying in that, uh, in that inn. Uh, however, I have a strange feeling that no matter where we were, something was gonna happen to us. As you kinda, uh, Head out to the main road with the three of you getting in the cart uh, or into the wagon. Um, the dire wolf uh, kind of starts pulling, uh, seeming to look over, seeing um, the uh, leather straps being handed off to Ned, uh, and immediately under seeming to understand uh, as he kind of picks up the pace and starts moving down the uh, way. Um, as you look about, you do hear um, some comments here and there every once about uh, once in a while about some group called the Cryptic Cabal. Uh, that last some uh, something about a concert last night, uh, and wiping or stopping some big necromancy plot um, as people are kind of walking by and whispering and laughing. Um, 
Yeah? Oh, cool. Um, hmm, this cryptic cabal is making quite a name for themselves. Uh, I will oh, also... Man, we should get a name. I will also note that you guys notice that the town is very lightly populated. The streets are almost empty for what you're what you're used to. Where last time it was almost you know carriage to carriage, basically back to back uh, throughout these roads. People coming through. You count maybe five, six people, and most of the businesses seem closed. Wonder if it's due to the attacks. Actually, um, is there? No, no, no sidetracking to the library. <laughs> Okay. Ned is looking for any anything that might have fallen out of the stores that he can put in his donation bucket. Oh, okay. Yeah, give me a search check, uh, Ned. Let's see what you got. Yep. Oh, no. 14. Thir 13 or 14? 14. 14. Um, as you kind of look about, uh, you notice as a, uh, what looks to be a, give me a second to pull this up. A busted up window in one of the uh, one of the houses. It looks like there's a corpse, kind of completely shredded off to the side. Um, but as you look about it, uh, there's a small coin purse laid off uh, a, a few feet from him, and a full chain shirt as well as some leather underneath it um, that you can kind of see on the body. Uh, does it look like? anybody is like guard wise as you look about you don't you don't even see any guards to be honest i mean the roads are almost completely empty it's it's quiet yes i will take the coin purse and the leather for donation <laughs> you look over and kind of pick up the coin and look around to see if anybody's uh, watching put it in your uh, your your donation bin your, your bucket here kind of grabbing off the pulling leather up off the corpse um, the arms seem to kind of come off cleanly and slop to the ground as you pull the leather up. Um, it pulls the chain shirt as the chain shirt falls off to the side. Um, I will mention this is a um, large um, le uh, leather. Um, this is studded leather for your own note as you look at it. Uh, and it looks to be well crafted. Uh, this is masterwork. <laughs> Kesanok just looking at you like, wait a minute, I hear. Hmm. Do you want the the chains? Uh, yeah. Let's just uh, put it in the back of our car for now. We'll decide. Uh, no, nah, yeah, I'll take the chains. As you uh go, kind of have a, as I imagine, Ned kind of bends over, great picking up the chain, tossing it over into the uh, to Kaz to catch in the cart. Um, as you do so, uh, you watch as a single wrapped uh, piece of uh, what looks to be leather uh, seems to kind of fall to the ground. It has a simple string around it and a heavy wax seal kind of holding it sealed um, as it uh, drops to the ground, uh, falling out of the uh, chain shirt. Hmm. Uh, wonder if it has any writing on it. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Uh, as you open it, uh, you see um, it reads uh, Mage Armor in common. Hmm, it's Mage Armor. Hmm. I'll definitely uh, take a closer look at this at some point. All right, as you kind of put it, put it back into the wagon. Um, Are uh, you? But to keep that in mind, like just for putting in my belongings, uh, what do I type? Is it just mage armor chainmail or like? Uh, no, it's a large chainmail shirt. It's just normal. That one's not masterwork. And then the spell scroll for your own note is that. Ah, uh, okay. Um, as, um, oh, and the, uh, chain shirt for your notice, you carry some values of about a hundred gold pieces. Okay. Um, as you kind of pull the, uh, loot off this thing, uh, Ned, looking, you can kind of, you, out of the corner of your eye, uh, you see the house that's been kind of destroyed inside there looks to have been a bloody battle as there's blood everywhere, burn marks on the walls, you see something around, uh, uh something on the wall written, um, kind of crudely, but with the light hitting it, it seems to perfectly read, um, death to the many legs. Hmm. Is it like M-I-N-I or uh, M-A-N-Y? Uh, M-A-N-Y. Okay. Uh, as, I, I'm not quite sure what this means, but I think we should be glad we only have two legs. 
You know what, Ned? I'm glad I have two legs, too. <laughs> Ken's not even I looking mean, at you. Some people imagine. would argue I have three, but... Ned, I do not need to know how hung you are. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you, Ned. <laughs> Aldrin, yeah? I'm gonna just, just disregard everything yeah. I've been hearing. <laughs> How much uh, money was in the coin first? Uh, 300 gold pieces. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> big donation! <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I imagine Aldrin just kind of like looking at this grimaces, looks back at what he was doing, goes back to what he was doing. <laughs> Ned, I don't need to hear about this, bro. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. Okay. Um yeah, you're doing all right back there, Aldrin. You're doing good, bro. Yeah. Um gonna be a nice change to be having to wear this mask for a little while here in this town. Well you uh, are or you're not? I am. I'm wearing okay. a mask and I'm not gonna take it off unless I'm in private. Um I mean okay. That's fine. I have a feeling that if somebody's mad this stuff was gone, that we'd just blame you. <laughs> I slowly looked at him. <laughs> yeah, Aldrin, as you look over at Ned, yeah. No. I, oh, and Keznock is just... laughing as well. Like, that's not just me, that's also Kez. I would appreciate if I was not blamed for everything just because I'm hiding my identity. Well, then why else would you be hiding your identity? Well, I mean, usually secretism breeds, you know, suspicion. Well, unfortunately, the other th the thing I did the other night uh, has garnered people noticing me, so I have to, you already. So wait, you're keeping a mask on to hide your identity, but when you did the thing, you didn't. Because I was, un un or I was hoping no one would see me. Aren't you thieves supposed to, like, leave nothing up to chance or something? You're seeing a town completely being attacked by undead. You think anyone's gonna notice you walking around? There's always a chance. <laughs> anyway, we're going to the library to get information. As the just dead stare from Aldrin's mask kind of settles the quiet... Um, Ned, uh, I imagine kind of commanding the direwolf to continue on. Um, you lot, uh, kind of head up the road, um, uh, passing the very destroyed, um, in, or rather, Adventurer's Guild of, uh, Garden's Grace, the one that you had come in pre to previously, um, and where you had picked up most of the quests that you had, rec or that you have now uh, on your person, uh, the inn itself, or the adventuring guild itself, looks to have been completely destroyed. Um, as you look across the street, the other adventuring guild that had been set up looked to also have been burnt, uh, burnt down for the most part, and also almost leveled completely. As all that remains is the bottom floor of the building. Um, this town looks like it went through hell last night. As you look about, uh, kind of following up the main road. As time goes on. You come to the, uh, finally come to the ca the center of town, where the palace is only another probably hour's worth of uh, travel. The large fountain with the uh, uh, depiction of this beautiful elf, uh, elven maiden, kind of standing out uh, and looking out uh, in front to the, uh, the three bard schools. You see the three schools lined up one next to another. Um, massive buildings uh, in their own right, many of them expanding up further and longer uh, into the distance. But as you finally come to the final one, uh, the Rustic Brass School, uh, seeing the gate is locked, a now being the, during the day, uh, students walking around laughing and joking, though less than what you uh, what would have been expected from Dom and the way and what Dom would have explained it as. Um, you see a very annoyed-looking um, guard just kind of standing there. Uh, a, what looks to be a simple dragon kin in a uh, plate, uh, holding a, a spear and a shield uh, as he stands at the, on the other side of the gate, uh, looking at you a lot, not acting or moving or saying anything. Uh, hail and well met, sir. 
Um, I am Kesdenok, and I was informed by my party member, Dom, that I'm to meet with uh, someone named Ingrid. He looks at you and goes, Oh, uh, your names? He looks over to Ned and Aldrin. I am Aldrin. Uh, I, I'm Ned, and I just start shaking his hand. Uh, as you kind of pull his hand through the the bars of the gate, he kind of pulls back reflexively, kind of lo- losing a uh, grip with you to take his hand back and goes, and I don't appreciate being touched. Oh, nasty giants. Um, you're not on this list. I don't have a listing for anybody here. You know, a listing is someone has a request for some, it's called Femboy or something of the sort, but uh. it was requested by someone else, though. Um, are you lot related to a... Uh, Z- uh, Zilp? Zilp. Zilpip. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think I'm the femboy. Uh, what do, I don't know what that means. Is that some sort of giant language, uh, sir? Um, it's kind of... definitely not something I like to be referred to as. Uh, sir, I don't really care about your personal issues. Alright, um, there's someone waiting inside the library that was told to wait for you, um, your, uh, benefactor, uh, has, uh, requested the audience on your behalf, so let it be known, um, that, uh, you are on, uh, his priority, or his, uh, shit list if you fuck up. It all comes back to him. Is that, as long as that's understood, and he kind of pulls the gate open, um, as, uh, it kind of slams to, off to the side, uh, opening up this massive campus where... Uh, you see mixed races of all sorts um, kind of going about their business. Uh, the sounds of um, music kind of being heard on the air uh, as it turns or kind of flows through. Um, the many uh, brass instruments that are being played. Um, this school is well known for having uh, one of the largest uh, brass instrument um, setups in the entirety of the uh, city as well as the most in the entirety of the world uh, and is one of the main places for all bars who are instrument who practice and use instruments for their magic uh, tend to go to um, as this massive campus opens up in front of you large castle like buildings that look to dwarf the palace outside uh, you see as the magic uh, that was kind of guarded or block causing illusion over this place fades as you walk in or as you follow in um, coming onto campus. If the guard kind of turns and looks at you for a moment and goes, uh, I assume you don't know where the library is. Um, I've never been here at all, so no. He nods and goes, all right, um, you're welcome to bring the dire wolf. The wagon has to be parked here. Um, the rest of you are welcome to uh, come with us. If you wish to leave your mount here, they will be fed and taken care of. Um, follow me, please, sir. Otherwise... And he kind of turns and gets ready to start walking as he waits to see if you guys kind of disembark or not out of the corner of his eye. Yeah, of course, yeah. We'll get off, bring the, um, put the cart where it's supposed to be. Uh, hopefully Ned tells the wolf, hey, we'll be right back, be a good boy, or whatever. <laughs> Ned? Yes. <laughs> okay! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ned takes your orders, uh, goes over, uh, setting the cart aside with the other guards, um, as it's kind of set with a couple of the other wagons that have already come through. Um, Uldren, are you also disembarking, or are you staying on the cart? Uh, I will disembark with them, okay. though I am going to be taking in the sights a little bit more, so I will be trailing behind. Okay. All right. As uh, Kez and Ned kind of gather together, or as uh, rather all three of you kind of gather together, um, the guard kind of finally nodding and kind of continues on uh, marching uh, at a decent uh, pace, only making about 30 feet every few minutes um, as he walks, um, the heavy plate kind of dragging in the somewhat uh, cold weather. Uh, as it's still pretty chilly out with the large clouds above you and no, uh, yet to have any sunshine. Um, thankfully, not raining, and thankfully, very little wind chill coming through. Um, about a half an hour of walking as you're taken through this massive campus. Bards of all races smiling and laughing, many of them pointing towards uh, you lot. Uh, 
Kaznanok, uh, you see a few of the bards seemingly from the windows of the towers that are in classes kind of waving and trying to get your attention as they put up signs for you. Um, to save you your uh, dignity, I won't read what the signs say. Yeah, um, yeah no thanks. Thank you. I much appreciate it. I don't need uh, any more um, today. You do see a few, though, that also seem to call up for Ned, um, as well as for Aldrin, um, as uh, people, or as bards of all races seem to kind of catch your, your lot's attention. Um, kind of doing anything they can to attract your, your, your lot's eyes for a few moments. Uh, I'm just going to keep my eyes straight ahead, not pay any mind to any of it. Uh, Ned and uh, Aldrin. I'm waving to the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Ned's, Ned's enjoying this. <laughs> Ned is enjoying this into it. The people are celebrating every time you wave at someone. Ned, they seem to laugh or sh you hear shrill screeps, screeks, uh, screeks, screeches um, as some will pass out on occasion. Um, many of it, you hear the some of them asking what could be under the green leaves. Um, <laughs> there, oh, there are such comments kind of uh, put out there in the wind. Um, Ulgen, do you react at all? Uh, I will keep a, uh, calm and cool demeanor. Um, at one point I will look to just one random bard. Uh, lower my mask just enough to where my eyes are, are showing. Mm -hmm. and wink. And then put the mask back on and continue on my walk. Man, y'all here. Man, sucks it. I imagine Cat is in the front, like, kind of, like, the, the slightly fuming at this that you guys are enjoying. This uh, something he deals with on the daily. Um, but as you do this, uh, uh, Aldrin, you see as a uh, large-looking um, giant, or stone giantess, kind of sees you and... With this uh, very bright nobleman's clothing of almost all these of shining colors kind of crafted throughout their silk, sees you wink at them. They seem to almost immediately faint, falling back on two other students, who you hear a quick scream from of panic, and then it goes silent um, as they, uh, the, the sound of the slamming is heard um, as you continue following. Um... But as the three of you kind of follow after this guard, the guard seems to kind of every once in a while look, uh, turn look turn back and look at you lot, uh, and kind of cough to try and get you back to focusing uh, as he continues the marching. Um, but after a half an hour, you come to this massive library that looks to be a um, almost like a a, a, gr a massive um, what's uh, like. Trying to think of a word here. Uh, a four-pillared marble uh, longhouse of sorts, um, looking to have a depiction of elves and dragons uh, fighting alongside each other against some unknown entity up on the top of the carving. Uh, but as you kind of climb the few stairs up to the top, uh, you see as uh, the building itself opens up to a massive library. Uh, the doors, the uh, two giant wooden doors, already pushed aside. And standing at the door, if you'd like to describe himself and introduce himself, you may. Justin. Of course. Uh, everyone immediately sees an eight foot five, uh, boar man carrying a staff and wearing very simple, kind of thrown together leathers. Uh, and also tiny little spectacles on his snout. Uh, as he looks slightly accusingly at the Oh uh, Yeah, as they come walking up the stairs, the guard kind of looks at you, Rend, just kind of bows slightly, turn, does an about face, and starts clankily walking back towards uh, his guard post, leaving the party and you kind of staring at them. Uh, as uh, Kez takes a second uh, to uh, look into his his book, his notes to kind of double check his information he has, um, i.e. the player. That, that, that's that's very funny. Uh -huh. um, imagine if I had said that. Yeah, no, no, right. <laughs> so you finally showed up. Um, I mean, I was just informed this morning about uh, being told to come here. I, I'm sorry if, um, for my party members. Um, Lack of informing me of the matters at hand. The girl spent all night in the library alone. I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there any way I can make it up to her? I mean, I can bring you to her now. Yeah, I, I mean, she's right over, and he stops, and he stares at Aldrin. He sniffs the air, and he just goes, oh. Oh, moving on. 
Uh, and he'll start walking towards where Ingrid is. Um, yeah, as you go to head in uh, the party kind of following after, you see the books are stacked almost 10, some places 15 shelves high. Um, a second floor to the building kind of uh, already set with a few students up above, all, all uh, kind of researching quietly. The library has a, uh, a little bit of chatter, but seems to be almost overall uh, pretty silent. Um, as you head over to the desk rend where Ingrid would be, um, you see that, uh, and suddenly remember that Ingrid had taken off after what had happened uh, last night, um, or, and with all that had been going on. Like take off out of the city, or yes, she's she uh, she is so what you were told is she left to go see her family. So yeah, sadly, she had to leave, but she did still ask me because she's a nice person to help you with whatever you were here for. I am the acting librarian right now, after all. Hmm. Well, um, we're here to gather information on the Zill. The Zill? Why would you... We're about to uh, go on a job in which uh, we know that there are creatures called Zill. And we are just trying to do research on them to find out more about them to better prepare ourselves for a potential fight. Uh, what kind of check do you, do you want for what I know about the Zill? Um, that depends on uh, what kind of information you want to give them, I would say. Um, yeah. Uh, if you're trying to just lead them to a book, I would give you, I'll say that's just going to be more of an intelligence check just to see if you can remember where it was. Uh um, I do have Profession Scholar. Okay, I'll take Profession Scholar. Um, otherwise, it'd be like a knowledge nature of uh, for this uh, for Zill specifically, if you're just looking at them from a monster uh, focus. Surprisingly, out of all my things, knowledge nature is not one of them. Uh, uh, that's a 27 Profession Scholar. Um, as you kind of lead the group in further to the library, uh, heading towards the vermin section, um, uh, funny enough, under V, uh, within the, li the large library, uh, kind of coming towards the bottom of the section, you find a full book written by some ancient scholar whose name has been smudged out of this book a long time ago. Um, and I say ancient as in, like, maybe 20, 30 years at this point, uh, for all that this book has been taken care of. Uh, but as you open it, it's a full um, explanation and breakdown from his experience with the Zill and his research. Um, as you go through it, um, it shows the, a picture of the Zill standing about four to five feet, weighing about a hundred pounds, um, most notably being able to speak infernal. Um, the creatures are typically known to uh, have four limbs, um, and the ones especially known in Drafica uh, would carry and use, or do are known to carry and use uh, simple and primitive weapons, unlike ones, uh, many of the ones in foreign lands, such as the Thrykreen territories, where they are also seen quite often. Um, most often, these creatures are known to fight intelligently by jumping into the ethereal plane um, and then basically jumping out and sneaking up on you. Um, however, if they are spooked or if they feel that they are capable of taking you amongst their numbers, they usually will try, won't even bother um, jumping in and out of the ethereal plane to attack you. They will usually go for a headlong uh, strike, unless they have an intelligent leader. Um, as it would be noted. Uh, beyond that, the only other thing it would mention is that Dra uh, Drafica especially is noted to have um, a, a rather large hive underneath in its Underdark uh, that are a somewhat unique and known to be slightly intelligent um, species. I look at the info on the Zill and I look at this party and, and Rend is just like, huh, they must be stronger than I thought and I'm just going to hand them the book. Hmm? All right, as you hand it to Kez, uh, or, I mean, well, not whoever would take the book, I guess. I mean, I'm just holding it out. I'm just holding I take it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Ned takes it as he kind of puts away his, uh, uh, the little joint he had, uh, kind of rolled up and getting ready to light. <laughs> seeing not, the... not, right. Yeah, seeing the mini leather, uh, but yet also some paper books throughout here, uh, I imagine kind of stopping him for a moment. Oh, right. Um, well, 
Thank you for this book. Um, gentlemen, I mean, is there anything else that you want to look for while we're here? Um, a, a simple yes or no would suffice. You see as uh, Ned and Uljin both kind of... I'm, I'm like trying to read this book in front of me. <laughs> in my hand. It is um, it is written in giant. Um, as you read through it, roll me a knowledge nature as you're kind of reading through it. Actually, gather information for this. Um, I'll give you knowledge nature as well for a separate thing, though. <clears throat> I'm wondering if, if there is anything I would like to research here in this library. So, Knowledge Nature is a 25. Okay. And then gather. gather Information was a 10. As you look at the, looking through the book, it's, I mean, it's a lot of reading, Annette. You don't really, you're not a big reader, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of words in here you really don't even care to try and learn or understand. But as you kind of see the pictures of the Zill, the paintings, it doesn't take you long to really figure out. These are ambush uh, predators. Uh, these creatures specialize in basically luring in their prey and attacking them. As you kind of think about with the flower quest and the, uh, the supposed rumors about Zill being in the area, it makes you realize these creatures must specialize in hunting young adventurers who think this quest would be easy and come unprepared. Or well, at least... Yeah. They're obviously trying to draw us into the flower field so that they can kill us. So, like, what if we well, just set the field on fire? Well, aren't we there to collect no. flowers? No. No, don't do that. No, don't. Like, Ned, the quest is to collect the flowers. If we burn it all, then we would have failed the quest. I mean... Would they have been... Do I know, would they have been smart enough to somehow... Right there because they knew the quest was a thing, or um, they probably it, couldn't have submitted the quest themselves. Yeah, they? look, looking at the creature, you're pretty sure there's no way it's uh, that these creatures specifically like submitted the quest themselves. Most likely, it's happenstance that these fields happen to grow, and these creatures probably eat these flowers or notice that other creatures are drawn to the flowers and therefore use it as their hunting grounds. In a sense, it just happens to be a happy accident that adventurers keep going over there because it's the big, the best source of these uh, all three of these flowers. I don't well, recommend I mean, fields. Um, not only will it probably not kill the creatures anyway, because it'll just dive deeper into the ground, you'll also get in trouble because it's one of the few and best areas to get those flowers on the continent. Um, so, uh, does it, uh, Ned, in that book, does it say about anything like weaknesses, how to fight them if you're in contact with them, any of that stuff? I don't know. Too many words, and I just, like, <laughs> put the book okay. into his chest. Heard pitfalls. <laughs> Oh, good. It's our detection. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, if we make ourselves look like more of a threat, they're probably less likely to ambush us. Uh, As you I, mean, more... I tried to do that with a bear once. You know, make yourself look big. Uh, it didn't work. Yeah, but what kind of bear I did you do? The bear explore? was my friend Charlie, and I just got oh. beat up a little. <laughs> oh. You know, I really don't know what to say about that, Ned. Um... I will mention, as you look uh, in the book, uh, Kez, kind of opening it up and looking through it, it does read in big letters, uh, these creatures uh, have the abilities to avoid and take spells. I mean, uh, and it reads, uh, lower level caster, or lower experience casters should not try and take these creatures on with only casting. Hmm. Uh, so, Kez ponders while eating an ear of corn. Yeah, uh, old, yeah, go ahead, Rick. I'm going to look these two down. They're fire giants, right? Um, two of them, uh, the three of them look to be a mix of fire giants. You're definitely sure they're at least half fire giant. Um, one's giant and green, uh, which is kind of not normal for a fire giant. One is kind of short for a fire giant, and the other is really short for a fire giant. Mm -hmm. Though they, their physical appearances otherwise uh, seem to share commonalities amongst them. So it doesn't take you much to realize these are probably half giants if, of sorts. If you looked a little closer at Ned's green, though, you'd notice it has, like, the strange mossy texture. <laughs> How well do you three do with Um, I've been around it quite a bit. I'm, I'm more at resistance, but... 
I mean, I, I'm resistant. The fire. Yeah, we're, we're resistant to fire. Uh, I have a better quest for you three. I don't recommend the Zill, but... And Ren's going to kind of scavenge for a minute, having a lot of random trinkets on his body. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, isn't there the quest for salamanders or something? Yeah, and he will hand you the quest for salamanders. Uh, they're fire creatures, so if you're not really affected by fire, they're a lot less dangerous. Mm. Even for... I mean, granted, my friend, we are new adventurers. Yeah, just avoid the nobles. The nobles? Yeah, the leaders. Huh. To mention, uh, to Uldren's question earlier when this looking at the happening? book... Uh, <laughs> when looking at the book, uh, for your own note, Uldren, uh, for their detection, you do see that they are noted to have uh, the ability to see in the dark up to 60 feet. Um, completely clear. Okay, but seem so to have no other abilities. Just dark vision, it seems. All right. Yeah. Just for your own notes, um, as you're looking at that. Uh, but as you're handed the, uh, the quest for the, uh, the salamanders, um, kind of look at it. It matches the same one that you had, uh, prior on, in the cart. Weak to the cold, uh, most of their destruction comes from them, you know, throwing fire at people. Uh, oh, it's the, uh, is it the hunt support one, or is it just... Uh, da, da, da. it's hunt support, because if he handed you legendary hunt, it, that means he wants you dead. Um. Yeah, I was, you know, curious about which one I was being handed. <laughs> Looking at how equipped you are as he looks up and down, I suggest specifically the Flame Brothers and not the average Solomon. There's all if you're smart, you might be able to take the average Solomon. Uh, they're weak to the cold. So, I mean, do with that yes, one. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they can't use the cold. You can. Fair. Uh, would I know with Hunt's support if other, like, how many other people are going there for the Salamander thing? Um... Yeah, um, so the, the story, the rumors of the quest, or the story of the quest is that, um, there was a group of, uh, mercenaries in the area that were looking for support to hunt these creatures, um, unfortunately, they left, um, or they are planning, they are working and getting ready to move out within the day or two of the, uh, of current, um, as, uh, you would have heard from your commander. So they haven't left yet, but they're gonna leave today. Yeah. I mean, they can still catch up. Uh, I mean, they leave today, so you could. Hmm. Or you could do what most people are doing, go join the, uh, the, the city siege. The city siege? Yeah. While uh, the mercenaries leave, uh, well, sometime within, within the next few days. Um, while the army is distracting uh, the front line, we're kind of sneaking around and attacking the city. Hmm. So the mercenaries are going and are going to be sneaking into the city. Uh, some are, and then the rest are going to siege it the next day. Gotcha. I mean, for I, I mean, you seem to have a are a wealth of knowledge for a party like us. Do you think we should be part of the like main army, or should we try to sneak in as well? Uh, if you're not all the stealthy sort, and he doesn't know you before, a nef will probably lay you out flat for trying to join the stealthy part. Uh, uh, Kesnok, uh bumps up and down, clinging with the chain. Yeah, <laughs> with his scale I, mail. Well, I suggest joining the main army afterwards. Although individually, I think you're a bit stronger than the average mercenary, so you should be fine, or at least better than most. Maybe we'll join the main army. Uh, plus, I could, if there's a war going on, I need to be there to help heal the people who are falling. I mean, I could bring you over to sign up with the main group. Uh, that would be excellent. Oh, and. Please tell Ingrid that when we do get back, that we should arrange something. Oh, I mean, if I come back, but uh, odds are I die in the siege, so. <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, Kaz, uh, Ren just turns and starts walking out towards the exit of the library. <laughs> Very well, astute observation that is always some possible chance of in a siege. Well, uh, it's true. death or dishonor, right, guys? He also gives Aldrin one last look before he leaves. All right, well, 
Now that we're Puppetron. men, Did you we're going to fight in war. Now that we're men, <laughs> would you say that? Ask Aldrin if he lied to me <laughs> about the fart thing. <laughs> Ren keeps looking at him. He had to fart it. <laughs> I I just shake my head. No, I've done no such thing. <laughs> um, as you lot kind of fall after uh, Ren, um, you kind of getting into your uh, your carriage. Oh, okay. Uh, getting into your carriage um, and or wagon and uh, following after, uh, Ren seems to kind of guide you through the streets. It takes a little bit, um, but <laughs> as you finally come to the uh, the mercenary uh, gates, um, you see as uh, much of the army is already packing up. Uh, looks like uh, as you see the um, le- many lycanthropes that you'd seen when you first showed up and tried to sign up with this group uh, already full equipment getting ready and heading, getting their wagons together a small group of monsters kind of seemingly uh, following after as this group starts to uh, look like they're getting ready to move out um, the, there are three other mercenary groups that you do see amongst the crowd a large uh, group of minotaurs um, a f- group of kobolds and the last looks to be a mix of dragonkin and uh, and koboldkin. Um, the uh, though, as you look around, Ren, you see the officer who's no, who's in charge of recruiting for the actual army, who's dealing with Althe- Al- Alithiander's uh, forces in the field right now. Um, who is probably much, has been kind of sticking around Neff's uh, most of Neff's uh, mercenary court company uh, during the uh, the recruitment period, as so many adventurers keep coming back into this area trying to sign on with Neff or one of the other mercenary companies. Um, so is he the guy to get them signed with to be able to come? Yeah, as you take a second trying to remember the name, you remember Neff calling them something of the something like Usknar. Um, they were supposedly some elder kobold kin uh, that uh, so they're known to be a woman, but you you're not a hundred percent sure either way. Well, I've never met them, so time for uh, generic terms for people. Uh, my friend, as I walk over. <laughs> it's fair. Um. All right, as uh, you kind of walk over, she kind of looks over this uh, elder-looking uh, kobold, uh, kind of leaning a bit more forward. She uh, looks to have uh, most of her scales look to be slightly dulled in their coloration um, with her big black eyes. Um, she kind of looks over at you and puts her ear, a hand to her ear, trying to cup her ear and goes, What did you say? My friend! Oh! Rend, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I brought a few more to sign up for the main group for the uh the after. Uh, you gotta speak slowly, sweetheart. I'm deaf as a doorknob. Do I know if this woman has any way to talk to her without speaking? No, not in the slightest that she's willing to. Oh. She's uh, one of those types, very cranky if you uh don't do uh, like try to work with her. Fair enough. Uh, I've brought some people for sign up oh some people for sign up all right um we're not taking pretty giants these days as she looks net up and down but uh i I mean you'll do big fella she looks over at kaz and goes are you the younger brother or sister you'll have to excuse me my eyes aren't what they used to be at least i'm not assuming (laughs) Looks at Kesna, not kind of staring, waiting to see if he responds. Uh, my microphone being muted, like, um, no, oh, sorry. Um, uh, no, uh, none of us are related, but we are in a party together. Ah, oh, you must be the talker of the lot, because you spoke so much. Uh, tall one don't talk, and the one with the mask gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right, short, dark, and handsome. What's, uh, what's your plan here? Well... Uh, my plan is to join up and support the army as best as I can. Well, Greg pays 25 gold pieces a day, 100 gold pieces if you actually manage to survive a month, and it stacks from there. Uh, we've been looking for sign-ups amongst the army for a while, but they're going to be about a week's journey north from here. Um, there's a big battle going on right now. lithiander has been uh, spotted, and I guess he's trying to make another push for the city when all the mercenaries leave. Hmm. Well, um, I'll be sure to do my best, and when we arrive there, um, try to patch up and heal as many of the soldiers as I can. 
you also get paid extra if you can kill anyone impressive. What's that, Rind? I didn't hear ya. And she kind of turns and looks at ya. Just telling him about officer bounties. Oh, yeah. Cut off the heads of anybody that looks like they're important. That's a, that's a good rule of thumb. If they're shouting orders or sitting on a horse, chop their heads off. We had a short fellow with long white hair, well, or short white hair, come through here recently um, asking the same questions. Well, he had a lot more uh, ambition. Kept asking me what they'd charge if uh, they managed to get the king. I didn't, couldn't tell tell him that they wanted the king, but the closest they thing they had was that Lithiander feller. Uh, yes, I'm gonna look at Kez. You're probably the uh, and I I will apologize because I am quoting here. Uh, the pretty maiden that the short one uh, talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Ren. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, he, this one's a woman? Oh, my, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, no, 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 ma'am. Uh. Oh, oh, no. Um, your short friend came in yesterday and told everyone that you were a... Oh, no. Oh. It was so sweet. He kept telling us about how you guys had some romantic meeting on, uh, as uh, he picked you up as you guys were, like, on the brink of starvation looking for a ride out, and... It was so sweet, honestly. I was uh, quite moved by his story, honestly. Your love is just... It makes an old woman cry. Hmm. Uh, Kesnot gives a thousand yard stare, just off in the distance. Shakes yeah. it off. The point is, he signed up with, uh, with our group. Something about needing to be legitimized because paperwork is very slow in this city. Mm. Ain't that the truth? Ever since Gregzy left the town for the week, it's been, you can't get a man to work if you fed him and fucking fu and gave him gold coins at this point. Anybody inside the palace, they'll, they won't move their asses if they, even if they had to. I'd be surprised. You set the palace on fire, they'd probably die in there thinking it was too hot. So... We do have a choice. Uh, we could sign you up with the army. That's, of course, the choice temporarily. Or we could, in name only, sign you up with Neff's group so you could show up to the siege. Um, oh, they can be shipped out with the Minotaurs. I hear they love uh, giants. There's their big one. He's known as the Big Bull. Although... I don't know. And she looks over at uh, both Aldrin and, looks, and Kez and goes... Between the two of you, you might want to stay next to the tall fella in the middle here. I, uh, he, he's, uh, he's not the kindest of fellas as a mercenary captain. He usually takes what he wants. They believe in size and strength over much else. Yeah, you know, emphasis on size as she kind of puts her hands out about two, like, looking about two feet in what, uh, length and goes, I've never seen one so big in my life. Hmm. I just look at Kaz and go, I told you. <laughs> they can't see it because of the mask, but I I slowly blink uh -oh. to die a little on the inside. <laughs> Aldrin is starting to second guess his decisions. <laughs> oh, right. You should probably apologize to Ultimus. I mean, your little friend already did, but uh, looking at Aldrin. Hmm? I slowly look to Ren. Apologize yeah, he to told, Yeah, little guy told us everything. So, uh... Well, if you can show me where this individual is, I would gladly apologize. But what happened? I don't know. Anything. Ultimus is the sneaky sword. I'm more mad if you come across him by chance. The distant explosion and screaming inside the middle of the camp gives a clear up sign, though, to Ren on where exactly Ultimus might be. Yeah, I know where they are. I don't recommend it. Uh, there's no grudges held... Uh, Zilpiff, uh, did some things and offered some things to make up for what you did. Uh. Yeah. I'll admit, breaking into Ultimus' room while she was changing wasn't a great start. Whoa, wait, wh what? Huh? <coughs> oh, yeah. You're not the only person Zilpiff is after. Turn, turns out young Ultimus has sworn some sort of angry blood oath against the entirety of the Snowbeard race after that. There's going to be some brutality after she uh, once she gets free of Neth for a weekend. 
I do yourself a favor, youngins. I wouldn't go to the Snowbeard Lands in the next month or two. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of explosions. From, from my understanding, uh, your little friend didn't realize Ultimus was female and then came in and, uh, and I was only told, um, a rat thong! A thong and nothing else? You, you see, uh, us dark Nargo. No, no, it was a rat thong. I, I saw it with my own two eyes. He was pale as yeah. a, a jaybird. Um, anyway, so, <coughs> which group do I have to sign up with? Do we, well, do we need a sign up to get to the front line as quick as possible? Well, do you want front line or do you want siege? Those are two very different things. Hmm. Front line, you're probably going to run into a life the Adnard. If you're going to do that, you're going to die. Just, the world leader themselves is leading the charge on the main army. Mm. Yeah, no, the siege signs are right. Uh-huh. Pick a mercenary company. Uh, can I get a rundown of each of them again? She looks uh, at you and glares. Yeah. We got a Minotaur horde that only respects strength and size. Okay, nope. Uh, we got my group. Now, the problem is they're doing the stealth portion, so you wouldn't actually be with the group. You'd just be on a name only. Uh... And Ren's gonna look at the uh, the other two uh, uh, groups. Yeah, as you see the uh, the co a group of kobolds um, that are listed as the Golden Hand Merchant Company. Um, familiar enough uh, as one of the mercenary companies who served in Dragon's Crown and to a couple of their uh, uh, merchant companies uh, along the way. Um, yep. And then a Dragonkin and Drakekin, a group known as Oats Last Nights. Though, interestingly enough, none of them seem to bear his religious marks, which is the only reason they've been allowed to camp within the mercenary quarters. And usually, uh, Dragonkin and Giants don't mix, so I don't recommend, uh... Well, you understand. Yeah, yeah, no, I gotcha. I, listen, I was raised in the giant lands. I, I know all the hatred. Oxenard looks at, uh, looks over at Ren and goes, Excuse me, young man, I'm a kobold myself. How dare you? I don't follow it. I just was raised in it. Ma'am, you know it doesn't go everywhere, but you know a lot of them don't get along. Listen, once you've had a giant, you ne you'll never go back, trust me. They just don't understand. <laughs> and she gives a wink over to Ned. Ned, you should hop on that. Uh, anyway. I got um, a little bit more realizing that's probably how my parents felt. <laughs> yes. There's there's a nightmare feel for uh, poor old Drew. Although... Ned just muted after that, didn't even. <laughs> there's technically one other... I don't recommend it, though. There's one other option, but... Well, I'd like to hear it. I like I have all my options ahead of me. Technically, part of the mission that Neff's doing isn't stealth-based, but it does involve charging headfirst to where most of the guards are. Well, they can also just instead stay here and work guard duty, but then you gotta deal with all the undead, uh, the people getting upset, the big ra a group of speciesist monsterist. I don't know what they are, um... There's a jackal running around the streets. There's a goose loose amongst the, the businesses. It's it's a whole issue. And there's a chance over high that a Lathan Yadnar breaks through and gets to the city at the time the siege is happening. It's true. My nephew's been left in charge of the guard, and he's about as competent as well. You ever seen a cat fight its way out of a, pep a paper bag? I think the paper bag would have beat him. Mm. Well, well. Although the one upside is you would actually be with most of uh, our group's men if you did the, the charging thing. So, you wouldn't be alone. Um, Just... Well, uh, if that's the case, let me... I definitely don't like to, you know, be the only word for our group. Uh, gentlemen, what are your thoughts on our options? I mean... I, I'll, I'll go with whatever. Uh, the, the Minotaurs seem a little intimidating, though. I don't know that I want to get in that. <laughs> Reasonable. Reasonable. Uh, Aldrin, what are your I mean, thoughts? My talents are more suited for stealth anyways, so I am 
While I may not be on the best standing with them at the current moment, I would say Neff's group is my or is better suited for me. Mm -hmm. So even if y'all don't want to side with them. Um, well, I mean, I am very much against us splitting off into different groups. I uh, will also put this forward, given Aldrin's um, previous session, um, as nothing's been hidden. The party, although in character, don't know it. Out of character, they do. Um, I will put this way, Aldrin. If the there is a vanguard already heading ahead of you to take the city, they're probably going to take the, uh, all the loot in the city's vaults, which means that only valuables will be in houses that you'll have to ransack and go and attack during the siege. It might be easier, hypothetically, to stay behind here and start looting through the very many broken businesses without being spotted, as there's going to be less likely to be guards looking for inside of thieves. I would say, I want to put forward some common sense. If Neff, a stealth group, is leading the charge, you know they're taking everything they can. Yep. Yeah. And if Neff sees you, you're going to die. Damn. So, Aldrin, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, this brand new revelation, I no longer want to be with Neff. Hmm. Well, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't be with Neff. Neff's doing something else. Um, you'd be with, as he goes through his notes, breakdown, uh, you wouldn't be with me, you'd be two of the other guard, uh, of Nav. Uh, a, a porcupine and a skunk, uh, uh, lichen throat. Hmm. Two mages. I mean Ned, I'm not sure about your stealth capabilities. However, I know, at least in my case, I move around with a little bit more noise. So, I mean, if anything, you two could possibly go with the stealth, and I can provide support to the charging force. I already told I... you to. You're part of the stealth. You'd be setting something on fire. Not very stealthy, if I say so myself. Well, to get there without alerting. Uh, there's a thing for that. Huh. Also, part of your job is going to be getting noticed. That's kind of half the point. Well, so I, is... I think what he's trying to say is where the distraction. You're half the distraction. There's another group. Well, you gentlemen, see, you see at that I, mention the uh, the cobalt woman like pipe, like smile and go, oh yes, did you hear about what that is going to happen to him? One, I've heard that uh, Ultimus has a bunch of explosives with uh, uh, some blasting like diamond like objects that she had uh, been talking about. She um, imagine that in a catapult and something with a tortoise. I'm very uh, curious. Tauntaun, Tauntaun shivers at the mention of his name. It just he just has that feeling. <laughs> Now, however, I do promise you, they're not going to do that to you. They're a special case. Mm. Well, if that's the case, um... Gentlemen, who's ready to set fire to enemy cities? Sure, why not? I like fire. <laughs> Alright. Uh, uh, I guess... This is my paperwork guy is Neff, so why not? Okay. Uh, uh, of ahead. course, ground rules... Uh, part of your pay will be taken by the mercenary company. That's standard. Uh, let's see. Any loot you take is yours, unless otherwise specified that it's needed for the group, because we were told to take some things uh, for Greg. Uh, other than that, just anything you do reflects on us. So. Um, that means be on your best behavior, boys. Um, I like oh, that too. I'm always on my best behavior. I look at you. Wrench looks at him at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's at that point that Asnar kind of pulls out a small wanted poster and then seeing that this is a joke laughing matter puts, starts to put it back away. <laughs> I don't even look at them. I keep looking straight. <laughs> it's, the, it's the meme of the guy sweating looking straight. I'm like, I, I can acknowledge it. I can acknowledge it. Yeah. Alright, as uh, you lot sign up, 
Um, you are told you have a full eight hours um, until the entirety of the uh, company is going to be moving out um, to kind of go about your business throughout town. Um, as you like, kind of, uh, the paperwork is finished. Rand has you sign on. Um, no uh, death insurance is given. Um, any gear you lose on the battlefield is uh, open for whoever whoever picks it up. Um, if you're killed, uh, uh, you will not be paid. Um, that no, there's no ex excuses, no extensions, no sending off to family. Um, basically, simple mercenary contract that none of you have experience with. Uh, but as Ren kind of writes up a full contract, um, you lot see that it also states that all prices and all payments are based on Greg's Mara Tom's uh, rates. Um, uh and they will be told, although they'll only see them passing, that these are the two that will be uh, in charge of them. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they uh, are both sized small. <laughs> oh god. So these are going to be like two of the people that's going to be coming with us to burn things? Uh, uh, or are they the ones that are going to be directing us and telling us what to do? Uh, They'll be coming with you. All but five of, uh, of our mercenary group are going to be coming with you. You're going to be part of the main force. Mm. Do they like being picked up? No. Ned? Ned? Okay. Well, Ned, I was asking now so that well, you know, I can do it, it later. It, ha Ned, yeah. ask first. The porcupine, the little guy, he's not against it, but I will tell you, uh, he is covered in spikes. So... I'm a man of nature. I, I I know a thing or two about spikes. You you say you're a man of nature, yet you recommended we burn down the the flower patch. Yeah, burning's natural. It <laughs> is, but for you know, forests, so, some plants don't grow unless the field's been burnt. But yeah, yeah but those yeah. flowers were growing just fine. <laughs> Bleed, as I point, a little picture of a porcupine. They like being picked up. It's just their their body naturally stabs things. Light doesn't, uh, pointing at the skunk. So, if, but if you don't mind smelling bad for the next week, uh, you could pick up light. I, I like lift my arm up as if to motion if you wanted to smell. Look, Ned's gotta know how a skunk smells. <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're a skunk. They're they're unfortunate friends, as uh, the uh, the statement goes. They're uh, friends with a cost. All right. I'll I've heard and the cost smells is... like this thing I tried once called Dream Lily. The little porcupines, <laughs> they, like they like riding on people's shoulders, so you could try to convince them. Well, so how far along are they? Are they also like the week out? Or are they about to leave? Uh, they, so, no, none of the parties have... The only people who have already headed out was the army is what is ahead. The next gotcha. part of the group has not fully left. They're getting ready to leave. Like eight hours. Yeah. Even eight hours. Yeah, um, okay. you do know the other group that was uh, said supposedly going with them is also prepping, but they're also being sent out ahead of you as a scouting party um, to investigate ahead of the, the entirety march of the Vanguard. So, um, you're being sent put in the back of the Vanguard, basically. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, you are given eight hours amongst the town as uh, you turn back. Um, I met, Now, is Ren going to kind of follow them around the town for the day, or is he going to go back to his job? Uh... Ren's done his prep, and technically his job is finished shortly. He'll just follow them to make sure they're ready. Because uh, Ren, I don't know, has nothing better to do. Okay. Yeah, as uh, Ren kind of follows, uh, or is going to fall after you. Before we move forward, give me a second. Someone asked me an important question. And I need to double check if that's... I want to make lobster bisque in this city. A lobster bisque. No, you're, uh, that's, no, all's good. Um, I just want to make sure I answered your question. I had pulled something. Um, yeah, you want to get lobster bisque? Well, the two guilds I mean, are destroyed, but the inn's still up and running. If you want to no. get the parts yourself, we're pretty close to the coast. You could walk over and... <laughs> I don't know where you're going to get a lobster, but you could try. You could try. I was just making a joke like, oh yeah, that's totally what was asked. I could go for some lobscouse. Some what? Lobscouse. Okay. 
Um, yeah, as uh, you lot head back towards town with Ren, though, um, is there any place you guys need to check out or that you guys are lo going to be looking at? Um, I will say you do get a signing bonus um, from Greg's Maratom. He's giving to all of his mercenaries, so you do get each handed 2,000 gold pieces. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, uh, we get all well, because of the immediate risk of death. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are technically on the clock at any point right now. You have to defend the city if you're attacked, so <laughs> that's the kind of caveat. I mean... That's fair. Um, is there... Yeah. What's up? What's your question, Kez? Uh, Chester was talking. I was gonna... Oh. Wait for him to finish. Red, I think you cut up. Oh. You signed up at the right time. With only eight hours left, the city's unlikely to get attacked, so... Hey, that's pretty great. Uh, are there any, like, potion sellers? I'm looking for their strongest potions. As you kind of think back for a second, there was a place that was known throughout town... Oh, as you um, had heard at the uh, inn itself, a guild by the name of the Humber Humble Horde Adventuring Guild. <clears throat> However, um, as you think for a moment, you remember seeing that same sign on the building that was completely leveled uh, from the platform up. Um, that you could buy it from us. Neff has a bit of a stockpile. Hmm. Depends on what you want. We don't have everything, but... Well, as I'm not a super experienced uh, cleric, I'm just thinking about maybe getting some uh, health potions to supplement. Oh yeah, what level? We got a few. Hmm. Maybe nothing I mean, too crazy. Um, how much do you pay for? Um, cause uh, what, cause it goes by the actual spells, right? Yeah, it goes by light, moderate, and serious. Uh, like the uh, cheapest. Just... I, I, isn't like aren't there like minor wounds as well or is that just uh, the cantrip minor is not a potion because there'd be no point it'd be a one health potion mm -hmm. uh, gotcha what are uh what's the cost of moderate health potions moderate uh well market price is 300 um that's what we paid we'll charge you like i don't know we have to make some little profit but not much like 320 Hmm. <laughs> you, you gotta understand. Uh, no, 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 I get it. I'm just trying to weigh my right. budget in my mind. It's just every potion you buy is one less potion our group has to, to better chance of survival. Oh, for sure, for sure. Hmm. Uh, Let's so, see. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll take, I'll take three moderate health potions. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll go grab those. Okay. That's nine hundred sixty. Yeah. So. Easy goal. Um. Yeah. You hand off the uh, the potions. Ah. Uh, um. And j just in case you'll need one of these, and I'll hand them an alchemist fire, uh, for the mission. An alchemist fire? Yep. Okay. As a fire starter, in case you can't think of anything. Mm hmm Osknar kind of looks uh, between the two of you. Seeing kind of doing business, and the conversation having moved away, kind of turns and starts to slowly walk her way, her yep. uh, self away, back towards the camp and towards the sitting area. Okay. Uh, what about you, gentlemen? You gentlemen need anything to pick up? Uh! I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you. I'm asking uh, DM something. Funny enough, yeah. same. <laughs> uh, yes, druids you... can wear studded leather. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, don't... don't worry, it's faux leather. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry, I'm being PM'd by everyone, so, uh, other than, Are you uh, Kez. Are you the good welcome about... to the worried part. <laughs> it's the studs sapping my power away that I. Oh, actually, yeah. Let me check that. I think stud leather the still stud, counts. The studs are metal. Technically. Oh, do are they? Unless you have it custom made, yeah, it specifies the studs are metal. Um. 
unless you got like a weird custom with like bone studs or something then and he said they were it was a masterwork well, so yeah i would also say that in this age there's just as likely to be bone these these studs to be bone or um th uh, wood because of the age so i'll, I'll say allow for wood um you know without issue for this one like so uh, iron wood or some shit yeah it's like just that. studded with wood uh, chunks of wood that would, that's fine by me uh let me yeah. see got got to ask you think good at climbing Oh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, let me take a quick look. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm not the worst. Because you do have to get over the wall somehow. Uh, there will be ropes going over. I just want to make sure you can actually climb them. If you can't, you might have to do what the other groups do, and they have a potion of flying they're going to use to get over. Uh, although they are just splitting one potion because it lasts a short amount of time, but it works. You could do the same. It, yeah, that might be a better option for me. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm, you could afford it. I'm with climbing, but I'm not as good at falling. <laughs> um, listen, gentlemen, I just don't know if we can afford a flying potion. I mean, uh, with the 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 friendly donation we got earlier, and I jingle the coin purse I had, mm -hmm. we well, might be much, able to. How much does a flying potion run us? I'm looking for it in the potion list. I don't think it's one of the really expensive ones, but it's not cheap either. Because uh, I think it ran me 700. Mm -hmm. Potion of flying. Uh, 750. 750. It's yeah. called, yeah, it's literally just called fly. Yep. Market price is 750, but I mean. If you just split the potion, all that happens is it lasts a shorter time for each person, depending on how much you drink. So, you only need one. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I assume Dom will be with us by the time we get to the siege. Uh, uh, right? Like, it is... As you look about, you don't know... Well, Dom did told, didn't tell you where they were going to meet up with you, so you've got to figure out some way to leave a message back for him, is what you guesstimate. Um, I well, can't I think have Hootie wait for Dom. Yeah, that's true. Uh, with a letter in. Yeah, okay. Um, should we just um, split this price? Uh, I mean, man, I just spent 900 on these twelve potions. Um, I mean, I. I'm sure if. Uh, if I buy this potion and I need a health potion, we can work something out. No, yeah, out. for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. These health potions are to supplement uh, in case I run out of, you know, healing spells. Like my, you know, if I get a little exhausted during the fight and I can't exactly cast magic to my uh, fullest. So, for sure, these are for the benefit of the party, not just, you know, myself. You said 750? Correct, yep. Yeah, but you'll be slightly well, uh, I'll put enough into the coin purse to make it seven fifty and set it on table. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, take one of those flying potions too. All right. Uh. <laughs> what about you, Aldrin? Do you uh, need anything? Uh, I've been hearing some rumors of a special type of ale that might have or prove beneficiary. Oh. Oh, that's the inn that got destroyed. Yeah, unfortunate. Though, I heard some rumors that he may have had a daughter that may know the recipe. I mean, likely with the inn destroyed, she's either dead, kidnapped, or out of the city. Um, and with eight hours before I leave, I don't think you're going to find them, or they're going to be able to make any before we have to go. Yeah. Yeah, making beer takes a little bit, man. Oh. I don't have anything. No? No basic supplies, no explosives, nothing like that? Is there actually a shop that sells explosives in this town? I don't want to take them your supplies. Well, Ultimus is a giant pile of blasting diamonds, but I'd have to convince them. Um, um and there's old, old like we're doing work for them. We're, they're going to get used anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't think Aldrin needs all the blasting damage they got. They have 
way too many. Sorry for the well, they didn't take any blasting diamonds. Uh, Zip it, Yeah, but you mentioned earlier. Ultimus mentioned a thing about blasting diamonds. Oh yes, it. yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about. Okay, my apologies. Brenda was saying Ultimus has way too many, and if they use them all, uh, the, the city might get leveled or something. <laughs> all right. Yeah. How much for? Uh, oh, you'd have you'd have to go talk to Ultimus. Oh, uh, great. I gotta go find Ultimus. Oh, excellent. Can you bring us to Ultimus? Yeah, or what? popcorn so that I can I, watch Aldrin uh, and Ultimus talk. Ren, Ren starts walking towards the, the smoke from the explosion. Earlier. Yeah, hey, let's go. Now that we're men. Da, 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 da. Uh, give me a second. I'm just doing math in the background here. There you go. People have questions I have to quickly answer in the background here. Um, yeah, as, okay, so you guys are heading into the town, sorry. I missed the last bit. Well, they're, they're going to the, uh, the explosion area to hold it by Black Diamonds. Oh, you're gonna try and find, wait, oh, okay. Alright, as you guys head into the main camp, alright. Yep, this is the quest. Um, <laughs> Rend is leaving, okay, alright. Um, uh, <laughs> now you're gonna PM me? Okay. Uh... Uh, I do not right now remind me at the end of session because I didn't write any of that down. I live balled that, so. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, on you if you didn't write it, I'll try and remember half of it when we get back to when we get to the end of session. Um, but yeah, so as you guys head into the camp, um, walking through the, uh, the, the mini tents, many of the mercenaries kind of eyeing you lot up, uh, many seeming to whistle towards uh, Kesnanok and Aldrin um, as they do so. Um, but as, uh, you lot kind of led through, many of the lycanthropes kind of acknowledge you lot, but almost seem to ignore you until you come to a large tent in the center. Uh, a bit of black smoke kind of pouring out of the, uh, the closed flaps. Um, uh, the two guards, uh, two what look to be, uh, ape, or, uh, grill-like lycanthropes standing on either side look very nervous as they are carrying their entire packs on their back, um, that are, uh, clearly, uh, slightly flammable. Um, as uh, the slight signs of uh, singe marks uh, can be seen as you come over to the large tent. Um, as you walk up, you hear the uh, a, slow, a little pop and then the ground slightly shake um, as more black smoke kind of pours out of the tent flap for a moment. Right. I'm going to do this these two a solid. I'll take over for a little bit. You two can. <laughs> they, they both kind of uh, give a salute and turn and run back to, off to the uh, their portions of camp to oh. get back to packing. All right. Time to try and talk to Ultimus. Yeah, you and I, what do you think is going to happen? As Kez looks over at Ned for a moment, uh, waiting to see if he says anything. I, I don't know, I just hope there's popcorn. <laughs> Um, as, uh, as you say this, um, you kind of, I remember the smile, uh, you hear so the, uh, the flap kind of open up and you see a large head, or like rat-like head kind of peek out, um, as they lock eyes with Rand and go, I heard, wait, popcorn? <laughs> what? Uh, Rand puts on an uneasy smile, not because of Ultimus, but because of the potentially exploding tent they're near, and says that's what one of them said, but that's not what they're here for. <laughs> Oh, well, you should have told me I wouldn't have dropped the diamond. Oh, shit. Um, you might want to run as she starts turning and kind of, like, okay. running out the tent flop. <laughs> um, as the lot of kind of... Huh? Yeah, we're just backing away. As the party turns to start jogging, you see as many of the other uh, mercenaries now well accustomed to this to start moving their tents further, and then a, a few moments of quiet as a, lo a loud sizzling is heard, and then a small explosion as the tent goes completely flying off the ground, up about 20 feet, and then lands back down in it, a, a perfect standing, um, and then collapses in on itself uh, moments later. Um, Impressive. As I was going to say, these people wanted to try and buy some of the blasting diamonds. Uh, well, that's, she kind of rubs the back of her head, kind of a bad time. Um, yeah, uh, Neff said I wasn't allowed to use them during the attack, and so I'm, uh, uh, yeah. Correction, you were told you weren't allowed to use them on an ally during the attack. Eh, same thing. 
Oh, don't worry about it. How would you... You know, you lot look to be just the right size to fit into the catapult I recently built. How would you like a, a special job? Ultimus, no. Ultimus. Uh, sorry, we, we've already taken up a job to be part of the uh, infiltration party. Oh, aren't you cute? She kind of walks over and grabs your uh, your cheek with her uh, very sharp nailed hand and kind of pinches how, it slightly. Wait, how tall is Ultimus? Uh, she is uh, six and a half feet tall, I believe is what her markings notes are. I'd have to double check. No. No, she's like three foot something. Yeah, I don't think she could reach my cheek. But she can totally climb you because she's done it before. Yeah, she can climb, probably. Let me see if... I know I wrote it. I had her... The book was Ultimus is very short because they're a rat folk. That was the. It may have been. Oh, anyways, yeah. As uh, she kind of pinches onto your cheek, uh, jumping down to the ground and uh, smiles up at you and goes, "Um, you lot don't look like you'll survive probably a week, but I'll pray for you. Um, and by that I mean I won't stab you when I first see you in the dark." Uh, well, they're not going with you. Luckily, they're going with Bleed and Light. Oh, well, that's fair. You know, she looks over at Old Drew and goes, You look kind of familiar. I, uh... I slowly, I slowly took off my mask, and I begin to bow. I'd like to apologize for my actions last night, or the, uh, two nights ago. Wasn't an issue until you decided to try and attack me. If you had just told me you were a thief, I would have left you be. I've got no time, and I don't get paid for killing thieves. I was under the impression you might have been one or with the necromancers. I mean, that was definitely true. Um, I was with them in a matter of speaking. Um, I was chasing them, trying to cut their heads off. Uh, they got away because you're, well, compatriot, I assume. The one with the bit, uh, the interesting face that was up on the uh, roof. I know, I, I saw his ass. I hope he knows that. If he's still listening and popping around here, I hope he remembers. I know where he is. Goddamn little bastard. Uh, I mean, he, I'm not he did also come in your room, so that, I guess that was quite a shock. He came in wearing a thong made of rat skin. Yeah, disgusting yeah. that is. Yep. <laughs> I hear this one's his mate. And she pulls a, a small dagger and kind of climbs up, almost in a blink of an eye, to Kez, uh, up Kez not putting a knife to his I just, throat. I just look not at Kez, his mate. He told, he told you he told everyone that. Oh, uh, you're not his mate now that you have a knife to your throat. I've never been his mate! I'm a man! So Wait. it turns out, Ultimus, this one's a guy. <laughs> oh, you're the... Oh, I feel your pain! She puts it, like, swivels the knife around <laughs> in her fingers and puts it... Away. I get mistaken for a man all the time! You have no idea! She jumps off, uh, somersaulting off your shoulder. Looks like yep. we have the opposite problem. <laughs> it was quite amusing, Ultimus. The person that was posing as you introduced himself as a man and uh, went the opposite route, saying they kept getting uh, misunderstood as a woman. It's, you know, people never listen these days, I tell you. Um, she kind of looks about and goes, Um, so, you lot are looking to buy the Blasting Diamonds. Unfortunately, I'm out. Uh, I did give a couple to uh, one of your, your compatriots, um, though I don't know where he is. Last I heard, he was going into town to buy iron in large quantities after hearing about a massive shipment coming in. Uh, you'll probably find, uh, the short one around town. If you do, can you kick him in the nuts for me? Because if you don't, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to kick him in the nuts. That's going to be all on you. Well, let him know it's coming. Oh. Oh. So, uh... Do you guys really oh. need the blessing diamonds? I mean, yes. Uh, well, we did. No, we're talking to Aldrin. Oh, okay! <laughs> I think Aldrin's oh, okay. Uh, girlfriend cold. But it's D and D time, Caleb. It's not girlfriend time. Good luck telling. We've that got man. you for two and a half hours of play time. Good luck explaining that to them. <laughs> I already, man. I already tried, and I got told uh, Caleb told me I wasn't allowed to talk to them uh, again. So. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not the kindest kind of guy when it comes to... <laughs> well, I guess... Huh. What does Zopip's up to that on Tuesdays? Listen. I swear to God. I'm gonna burn Zopip out of that damn fucking ship. <laughs> Alright. Uh, 
All right, Caleb, uh, uh, if you can hear me, please just type in the chat if you really want the Blasting Diamonds. You can always come back for them later if you think. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be before we're going to ship out. Well, I know it's going to be eight hours, but hours. I don't know. You, you don't know when eight hours is? I I don't know if we're going to be leaving before... Uh, I don't know if the eight hours are going to be up before Aldrin is able to say words again. <laughs> Got you. Got you. Um... And now I'm going to give you a chance, so while we're waiting for, for a second, uh, we'll, we'll take a moment while the party thinks about this, uh, as uh, the viewer takes a quick blink of the eye. Alright, well, welcome back as uh, we lose uh, our uh, Aldrin for a moment, um, who kind of, uh, hearing that Ultimus has no blasting diamonds, kind of just uh, shakes their head and turns and starts heading back towards the city, leaving um, Kez and Ned uh, by, with uh, Rand. Um... Ren, uh, I don't think so since uh, nothing has happened yet, but does your camp need anybody to perform any medical duties? Uh, although I doubt oh, it. We, because... Oh, we have, we have our own medics. Um, yeah, I figured. I've got a... I've, Ultimus kind of pipes up and goes, I've got a medical issue. He's uh, short, white-haired, and needs to be cut off at the stem. I can't help you with that. No, oh, I tried. Uh, however, if actually, I would like to talk to your medic. Uh, you know, honestly, I like learning from people who have been in this, who've been on the medical side of things for quite a while. They have a lot of information they could use to help other people. There's like a lot of my travels. You'll be traveling with them. They are your leader for this mission. Oh, uh, which one would that be? Uh, do, do, do. I will point out the picture of the skunk again. Oh, okay, so the skunk's the medic. Uh, lead medic, but yes. Ultimus giggles at that. Just, uh, don't annoy them. Uh, trust me. I'll try. Uh, that warning was good for you. <laughs> oh, as, uh... I knew no such thing! <laughs> <laughs> I say Ren kind of eyes Ned up and down slightly. <laughs> All right. uh, well, uh, is there anything that needs to be done around camp before uh, everyone heads out in that in these eight hours? I've got really nothing I need to do. Ultimus smiles big. I I guess I should put my donation bucket up because uh, it doesn't sound like they appreciate that. Uh Ultimus, it seems uh, you have a request. She uh, Ren from behind Ultimus is shaking his head no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hearing Ned's donation bo uh, bucket, uh, box go, uh, comment goes, would you like a, a donation to your uh, your organization, group, your um, uniformity, whatever it is? She looks to Ned. <laughs> Ned muted. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Ah, uh, would you like a donation uh, in exchange for some easy work? Uh, depends on what the work is. I just need you to deliver a simple object to someone. Um, no, no, mu not much work. It's uh, I'll get you. Let's say I'll give you a hundred gold pieces if you do it for me, and then you can go take a look around town, see if anybody needs some work around there. I doubt there'll be any in the mer in the camp right now. Uh, it would the person that we need to deliver to happen to be a very uh, small gentleman who? No. No. Okay. I honestly thought you were trying to guess. Of you know. <laughs> yeah. Listen. You know. Oh no! I've already planted. Uh, I've already planted some um, interesting objects inside the ship that he's uh, pi uh, he's piloting. Rand, is your neck okay? <laughs> Ultimus turns, looking back at Rand. I I stop. I'm just standing there. Whistling. Yeah, Rand. You know, I uh, I heard we could use some more training. How about we you come join me on my training this weekend? Neff said I could take some of the troops with me. 
after the siege and maybe go uh, run some uh, some training bit with you. I've got a core explosive course just for you. I mean, an obstacle course. Uh, you know, see, funny thing about that, I cast Fog Cloud and Run. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, he'll be back. He'll find. Don't worry. You'll see him in town here in a few minutes. I imagine he hasn't been able to pull off the trick, my uh, my trick yet. But um, no, it's a simple uh, exchange of goods. I uh, owe someone something, and uh, I I don't want to have to go deal with it inside the town, given um that little bastard still in there, and I know his ship is docked outside of town. All right. Well, um, what are we delivering, and who? To whom are we delivering it? Ah. Uh, I've got a this simple uh just she hands you a what looks to be a, a box of sorts, um kind of completely wrapped with a bit of string kind of holding it all together. Uh she goes, Don't drop it, um, it'll kill you. Um But uh I just need you to go drop this off at where uh at the where the Humble Horde Adventuring Guild was. Um it just set it in the front where the front door is, leave it there. Personal collect it, they may take it from you directly. Um you, they'll know who you are. Um, if some, so don't worry. You hand it off to whoever asks for it. Um, but what if someone asks for it who isn't who we're supposed to deliver it to? Well, they'll, they'll end up dead. Well, all right then. I mean, if uh, you're really just... suspicious, you could always try to drop it or throw it at them. Mm, well, I mean, if they're just going to get caught if they're not the right person anyways, then it's not really our problem. Sure. All right, so uh, how far is about how how long is the ride? To, uh, uh, if you're ta ride? if you're taking a cart into town, it's an hour or two into town, uh, hour probably, uh, in and uh, at most, uh, really you get up there, um, shouldn't take you to that much time. Uh, the problem is you gotta go find Rend. Uh, he's gotta be somewhere hidden around there. Oh, when you do. Do uh, pass on a secondary message. Um, his name has already been signed up along with uh, two others, um, and he know he'll know who he knows who they are. Ren knows that's not true. He does the paperwork. <laughs> uh, Ultimus kind of smiles and uh, just kind of uh, as she hands you the package uh, and then hands um, you a pouch of gold. Um, Ned, here's your donation money. How much was it? A hundred gold pieces. Hundred. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. Um, yeah, we'll we'll deliver this box to the guild. She nods uh, as she turns, you know, going back into the collapsed tent and starts putting it back up slowly. Um, yeah. All right, uh, Ned, let's rock and roll. Aldrin, uh, uh, Aldrin. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh well, it's just you and me, Ned. I I think earlier. He passed gas the way that Rand looked at him, so maybe it was like a, a bathroom emergency. Uh, you know, if he shit himself, I'd laugh pretty hard. Um, but, uh, I guess we have a package to, to deliver. Nothing All right. Could well. and nothing could possibly ever go wrong. It's just a simple package delivery. Uh, yeah. So... We just take it to camp and set it in the middle of camp, right? Uh, the package? No, we have to bring it to the the adventure guild. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure oh, whatever's in this thing is very dangerous, and I really don't want to leave it here. <laughs> Lead the way. Another uh, word, men. Da, 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 da. As you head into town, um, call it, uh, the guards at the gate, uh, at the mercenary quarters gateway, kind of seeing you lot, um, kind of nudge towards a, a figure now, kind of cloaked um, in a bit of heavy cloth. As you see Ren kind of come around, meeting you at the, uh, uh, as you go through the gateway, two guards just kind of uh, look, ignoring the situation. To be honest, as they look about. Um, as you notice them, they look to be rather thin and quite young-looking for kobolds, um, as uh, they, the armor looks to be very ill-fitted. Um, kind of, it, It's not hard to tell that these are new recruits, um, and this is probably the bottom of the barrel for what's being recruited. Mm. Uh, hey, uh, Rend, do you have any idea what's in this box that's going to be so dangerous that if I drop it where I'm, I'm probably going to die? Uh, well, 
if you got it from Ultimus, um, Ultimus only deals in either explosives, dangerous poisons, or both. Uh... Hmm. Explosive poisons have been a new fun for her lately. <laughs> yeah. Mmm, mustard gas. I, well, I could tell you if there was poison in that if you wanted me to. You know, uh, I think... It seems like snooping around, and I don't want to die. You know, you are correct. I think ignorance I, is bliss. I suggest, uh, yeah, to not... Plausible deniability. Plausible... You know what? We were just told uh, by uh, a superior to deliver a package. That's it. As Ren kind of gets into the wagon, climbing in... Uh, you lock kind of head on with the direwolf, seeming to pick up the pace a little bit now that these streets are clear. Uh, you make record time, um, almost making it there in half the time as uh, the direwolf kind of runs through the town. Um, you see Don kind of jump ahead into a back alley um, after waving to you lot as you pass by, um, kind of as they disappear uh, around the corner. Um, out of sight. Uh, you let head down to where the two adventuring guilds uh, they used to face each other, now one completely destroyed down to the foundation, the other, uh, the owner now dead, and uh, the building looking like it's been abandoned. Um, though, surprisingly, it um, looks to be uh, like all the goods are still there, um, and the building looks to have been untouched. Uh, but as you look over where the um, the Humble Horde Adventuring Guild once was, uh, you see a single wood chair, a, a very hefty wooden table, kind of sat um, in the middle of what is the wooden uh, flooring. Um, a large-looking uh, fire giant, or sorry, storm giant, uh, kind of sitting there uh, in the chair, just drinking from a very thick golden flask. Uh, up, up on his chest, a, bra a very large tattoo of a um, golden mug with a skeleton hand holding it, uh, slightly spilling over with the liquid being kind of colored, almost of a, like a red, a bloodish red. Um, you motherfucker. <laughs> as uh, this figure kind of looks over at you with their like uh, darkened skin, bright or shaved head, thick, hefty beard, um, bright yellow eyes. Um, they look over at you and go, "Are you Ultimus?" As they speak uh, in giant. Uh, back in giant, I go. Uh, no, but we were sent here by Ultimus. You're. He sent a he sent a woman. Uh, not a woman, sir. Well, you Actually, smell. You the Ultimus is. She sent a man. <laughs> oh, hu hush, Beastkin! As he looks at her and dismissing him. Uh, you. He looks at Kez and looks at Ned and goes, "You too. Why don't I use a storm giant? I can smell it." Uh, that'd be me, sir. Who's your on my mother's side? Who's your Who's your mother, Welp? Uh, she was a Vikinger. And what clan? That's an excellent question, DM. I have the lore written out. That was for you to decide. You can take this however. If you want to claim a name now, you can, or you can choose to claim ignorance. Um. All right, now to read options to Hunter. I was going to say, I will allow the pocket DM to take his role as he wishes. <laughs> I've got, like, a... I'm gonna be honest, I have like 50 tabs open. I can't open anything else. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go through them, Chastin. All right, Hunter, do you want to pick by clan or do you pick by what the leader of the clan's known for? Um, let's go by just the clan. Okay, I don't think you want to be related to Clan Granaga because it's going to come with infinite uh, political problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have Clan Belf. You can probably guess what they're known for. Uh, they are fiend worshippers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Clan Agedi, which are known for their celebrations and drinking problems. Uh, also, they all worship different things. These, these ones worship uh, an ancient like creature. Uh, we have Clan Herja, which they're known even amongst the dragons as a clan of warriors. Uh, they're known as being extremely fine soldiers. Oh, uh, what was that one again? Uh, Herja? Clan Herja. Yeah, Herja. Uh, however, they're also known for being the most likely to die because they have the lowest population due to liking raiding so much. Uh, okay. We have clan... I'm going to say this wrong. Freoctal. They're all based on Aztec uh, words, so they're not Yeah, specified. no, I know. Uh, they worship uh, emerald rabbit statues. 
they worship their leader of their clan like a god. Okay. Uh, clan Quinga, uh, which is led by a large voluptuous woman, woman which will make the misunderstandings even funnier. Uh, she is called the Grandmother of Storms. Her clan isn't really known for a lot. However, she did scare the ever-loving shit out of Ogeron. Uh, oh, Garen. Yeah. Oh, Garen. She scared the fuck out of him in a fight, and she walked away with no injuries. Um, clan Afropapalotl. <laughs> yeah, that, that works. Yeah. 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 No, I know, man. Uh, they are kind of the opposite of, uh, of the warrior clan, because they're known for their defensive tactics. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna call it some clan caught that are known for their magic. Uh, I think we'll say I come from my Storm Giant side. The, I was raised, because I know I was raised with the Storm Giants for quite a while. Let's say I was raised with the Clan Hydra. Oh, you're uh, right dead. All right. All right, uh, so when he looks at you and says this, what, what do you say? Uh, I say I, my mother is of Clan, what was it, Hydra? Hydra. It, it's Herja. Her it's actually oh. Herja, because uh, if you know, uh, it's based on Norse, uh, or with the mix of Norse, uh, Jays are wise, uh, mostly. So, yeah. well, I, mean, you, I mean, you said yeah. Aztec. Well, I guess yeah, you'd be uh, like Aztec. Uh, yeah, Aztec is the names of the cities, but I still base most of it in Old Norse, uh, if you look through almost all of them. But, you know, that's fair. Uh, as you say this, he looks at you and goes, Interesting. You claim my own clan, yet you're a fire giant. Uh, my mother took a, a husband in one of her raids. Disgusting whelp. Uh, bring me my cat package. I want nothing to do with your filth. Uh, I just hand the package, and I, uh, I leave. As he takes it, looking and goes, Before you leave, do you know what this is? Uh, I ex I... Honestly, uh, I know little of, ult of um, Ultimus. I know that they like explosives and or poisons. Um, other than that, no clue. Then you're not in the least bit curious. Um, uh, ignorance is bliss. Uh, I have a strong feeling that whatever this is, is, uh, incredibly dangerous and illegal, and I really don't care about it. I'm just doing a job. You're not wrong on that, as he kind of puts it away into his pack, as he starts, stands up and goes, I plan to use it. Uh, I have a, I've been hired on for a job. Um, I hope you lot aren't related to the Ironheart Merchant Company, but I'll be seeing them, uh, real soon. And he kind of laughs at that, uh, as he kind of starts to walk away. Uh, the slight gold and, uh, silver in his teeth sparkling, um, and the slight, uh, light throughout the streets. Hmm. The strange feeling about that gentleman. Oh, he's a famous pirate. <laughs> if, if he, if you just please do what I told you, Yes, just let that imagine going look ghost white then. Oh, oh man, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, hey, at least uh, I know what he thinks of half breeds of his clan. Uh, definitely not well, favorably. I mean... Most pirates nowadays are known for uh, preferring their purebred race. So. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, mission completed. We already got our gold. I guess, um, Ned, I mean, we've got, what, another about like an hour, hour and a half ride back into town. But, you know, we're going to, we still got a bit of time before we start our march. Is there anything you want to do? Or are we just going to make sure we're all chill and have a little bit of a relaxing time before we have this march? Yeah, I don't really think I need anything special. I, I'm ready to go whenever. Uh, you guys own a bag of holding? A what? A bag of holding? Uh, no, we don't have one of those. Uh, how much do they I cost? recommend one. Your target's an armory. You're welcome to loot it if you want. Oh, shit. Yeah. Fuck. How much does a bag of holding cost? Mm -hmm. You have to go check. I haven't bought one in this town. I know Neff has, but... Well, Neff bought a few. Well, uh, who sells them? 
Uh, as you uh, take a second a second to think, uh, you remember there are two um, magic shops. There is the Golden Flame Magic Item Shop that just does basically magic items in general. Uh, but then there's also the Kinky Buckle, which is famous for its armor, uh, its magic armor. Do I know? Oh, which one? fantastic! Let's go to the Kinky Buckle. <laughs> what, what was, was that, friend? Do I know price differences and which one Neff goes to? Um, Neff deals with the Kinky Buckle typically. Uh, most often because he gets better deals. All right, kinky buckle it is. <laughs> okay, uh, as you lock kind of head uh, back into uh, or head up the or down the city in main the main street of the T uh, section, uh, following it down, um, you come to the the small or the uh, black wooden shop with the with a straw like roof. Um, the majority of the shop seems to uh, be completely uncovered and kind of out uh, and about with the blacksmith's uh, working area completely open. Uh, welcome back, by the way, Aldrin. Um, as uh, you guys kind of come to this uh, building, kind of seeing Aldrin walking, uh, kind of looking about the shop itself uh, to see if it's open. Aldrin, having um, left and come back uh, after reaching or trying to see if there were any blasting diamonds for sale in the city, uh, Looking through even the back alleys, you weren't able to really find anything as you looked about, unfortunately. Um, it seems most of the city has either been either cleaned out or you have heard of the item. Um, as uh, you, though, came over to the Kinky Buckle, having heard supposed rumors that there might be some of the stuff, or some of the blasting diamonds that you had seen used um, in the smithing technique, uh, and hoping that you'd be able to get some. Um, as you arrived, you noticed the large uh, closed uh, Intel further notice sign in the window. Hmm. Uh, I will say, uh, Aldrin, uh, by just kind of when having had walked up to the door originally and kind of checking, you would have noted that the front door was unlocked. Um, but as you kind of turn back, you see the rest of the party, including Rand, uh, kind of following up uh, in a uh, wagon um, as they spot you kind of catching up to you. So the door's unlocked. Wasn't me, I swear. Oh, Aldrin. Dun, 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 dun. Well, that must mean they're open then, and I start to walk in. <laughs> she opened the door. Uh, it's quiet, cold, and uh, there's no lights inside the shop um, at all. Uh, but the door does seem to expand slightly taller as you go to kind of duck down, uh, Ned, expecting it to... You know, the door's only meant for someone of medium height. You clearly are much taller. As you kind of duck down, expecting it, it seems to expand to your height naturally, allowing you to walk in. Yes, Rend? As Rend, I'll be out here. It's a uh, uh, bad taste to walk in when it says closed. Ned didn't even notice the sign, to be honest. <laughs> As Ned uh, pushes in, yeah. I just look at the uh, other two. I mean, it does say it's closed. I mean, listen, I, I'm I mean, your friend gonna be go gone in. in. Uh, Ned, the, the the sign says closed. We should probably give it a second. Maybe just like knock or something. Uh, there's a sign that says closed. Yeah. <laughs> the door looks open to me. <laughs> Ned, that's breaking and entering. That's a crime. Well, uh, I, I didn't break anything. As you hear, uh, or as Ned says this, uh, Ned, um, give me a listen check. Alright. Technically, the crime is entering. <laughs> yeah, trespassing. Sorry. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, you hear, as you say this, a couple of something metallic in the back of the shop seems to kind of like uh, kick about and uh, as metal clangs and falls to the ground um, just as something scurries by in the back of the shop. Did I see anything? Uh, you, well, do you have dark vision? Uh, I don't think so, but let me see. I don't think base fire giants. No. Do. No. Um, yeah, then uh, you, uh, with the, the dark, uh, with it, you can give me a search check to see if you, uh, or rather spot check if you see uh, manage to spot anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's see. Uh, dirty 20. Another dirty 20. As you um, kind of look about, something for a moment flashes uh, as a light kind of uh, in the back room seems to kind of illuminate slightly for a moment. Uh, and then go seemed to go out. Uh, the light was almost kind of like reddish in color. It looked like two things like smacking against each other that caused it with a slight illumination before uh, something seemed to drop and slam into the ground. Uh, 
Hmm. I'm going to walk out of the premises and then tell them what I see. <laughs> As you back, uh, like step out of the shop uh, and mention this, uh, the rest you hear this. What do you do? I mean, this ain't Ren's problem. I'm gonna be out of the city by today. Uh, I'm gonna cast light. Huh? Into the shop. Uh, hey, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast it on Ned's staff. <laughs> okay. Uh, as, uh, Ned, your quarter staff, uh, the one that I, uh, that the anvil, uh, personally, uh, signed and gave you, uh, starts to illuminate. Oh, For that's some not reason, how and you guys can't figure out five. why. Oh, sorry, it lights up around the point, my apologies. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm like, oh, no, I started reading, I'm like, oh, it's not the same. <laughs> oh, no, okay, never mind. What was that, uh, as well, Ned, sorry? Oh, it's not the same. Never mind. Okay. Uh, Ned, or then, uh, yeah. What do you, uh, what do you guys do with this info? Uh, well, you know, just to, it's honestly just to light up the air because I know you said it was dark in there, so it's yeah. to give at least uh, Ned a better view of what's going on in there. Yeah. As uh, so, so it's good. Yeah. So you know, pretty. I guess what it's like a little ball of light or something. Uh, wait, uh, spell causes an object to glow like a torch. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you watch... Mobile. So you watch as the end of Ned's quarterstaff starts to oh. glow from a little light that, uh, from your perspective, Ned, looks like it's a light yellow, or a bright yellow fire as the stick, at the end of the stick, seems to catch. Um, though you don't smell the smell of, uh, burning wood. Uh, don't worry, Ned, it's not actual fire. But help, you could use it to help take a look, good look around. Uh, Ned, <laughs> hearing that he can use it to help look around, will like hold it up to his face. <laughs> not no, not like like shining light in a dark area. Not like Ned. It is like bright. Your eyes kind of bright out for a minute, and you can. It takes a minute to kind of clear your vision as you uh, pull it away. Blinded, you make blinds. Yep. I'm just constant blinking. Uh, well, they're all the little dots. I face palm. <laughs> as Kez smacks himself in the face, and his face palming hard, um, you hear the clap, uh, Ned, as uh, the, your blindness kind of uh, clears up. Just in time, as you see a big, four, like, a, a, a bit of a, a red mark now on uh, Keznok's face uh, in the shape of his hand. I will go in to see if I can see what that was. Yeah, as you go in, um, kind of illuminating the room, uh, you watch as the entirety of the room starts to glow. The armor on the, uh, the racks, uh, all with price tags, um... The uh, smithy itself slightly glowing uh, a little bit, though it looks to be completely cleaned out and emptied of any sort of, like, uh, rust, any sort of wood. Um, the place is almost spotless uh, as you look about. And as you kind of go into the back looking towards it, you see two chunks of metal that seem to have slammed onto the ground. Um, though, uh, as you look around, you don't see anything immediately. Give me a search check to see if you uh, notice any signs of any uh, creatures or beings in the area. Right. 14. Um, as you look about, uh, you do notice a, little, a few rat droppings uh, kind of scattered throughout the uh, um, the back of this uh, smithy. Um, as you look near where the metals uh, similarly colored are kind of stacked up, you do see a bit of rat fur uh, and look what looks to be some sort of piece of tail that got, uh, must have been caught or something of the sort. It looks like there's uh, been a rat here, but other than that, I don't see anything. Ned ignores the rat. A splendid move. Um, as uh, Ned shouts this out, you see the uh, the bright or the the dull emerald gales kind of coming towards as a the cobalt kin you res recognize as Ustinar, the old lady uh, from the army recruitment that you met earlier. Uh, it comes walking with a pretty hefty cane as she kind of. Looks over and go. Uh, she finally catches up to you a lot and goes, "Can I help you?" Oh, Rand, is that you? I. What are you doing at my shop? I was taking these ones to buy some bags of holding. Oh well, shit. If I had known that, I would have come and opened up earlier. Is that your friend inside there? 
And she looks in, seeing Ned's uh, glowing face. Yes. You got a rat problem, ma'am? It's not a problem if he if you're feeding him. <laughs> and his name is Jimmy. Yeah, he, uh, he saved the kids from a snake when I uh, when I found him. And damn near tore the snake's head off, and then we call we kept him around after that. We called him Snake Bait for a while, but that became a uh, kind of a nefarious name, is because snakes kept showing up, and he kept getting in fights, and it, uh, it's a long story, youngin. Huh. Um, Just know that's not how rats work. They don't do that. But uh, I've been I've been feeding him for years. He's got to be like 34, 35 years old now. I swear, uh, if, I walk, like, if there's just a guy that's like a rat kid, I swear. Just a, just a rat kid calling the phone, like, hey, don't ruin this for me, man. I have a pretty good gig here. Uh, hey, you, the one with the light spell, Ned, was it? Big tall drink of water. Go ahead and uh, wave that light spell around the room uh, near the uh, candles. It'll uh, cause the entire room to start to light up. I start waving my staff around. As you it's do. a ray! Uh, yeah, as you kind of wave it around, the candles start to slowly light uh, one after another, and the entire room kind of lights itself, uh, causing the light spell on your uh, um, um, staff to kind of immediately go out as the last of the candles lights. Uh, as she kind of walks in, pushing the door aside and turning the sign over and goes... Well, don't be strangers. Come on in and have a drink, oh, God. a Shit, bite. What was that guy? What was that guy's name? Torvin, Torval, Tangerine. I can't remember that fucker's name. Who? <laughs> uh, that the guy who told me about the kinky buckle in the first place to oh, come well, here. I was say that's on you to take notes. I don't. Uh... Yeah, no, I can believe I'm whiffing on his name. So I also think that uh, I got a divine revelation of when he had like like a knife in his hand standing over dead bodies and shit. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Found it. Was it Tangerine? <laughs> no, it was, it was Tolvir. I just searched Kinky in the in the search of the channel and I found it near Kinky. <laughs> she kind of nice. like, she looks at you and goes. So what can I do for you? You said something about bags of holding. I've got bags of holding. Um, you came all the way over here to do business with me for it, huh? I uh, yeah. I guess I can't sell you a bag of tricks now. Otherwise, that would be bad business. Um, as I'm uh, with that kind of a request. How much money you got to spend these days for uh, this bag of holding? Oh, you don't just have a price. It's uh, like a haggling situation. Well, I could tell you, but then there's no fun in it for me, youngin. I gotta see how good of a customer you are to make you worth my while or not. Hey, Rand, how much uh, do these go nowadays? Do you know? We, uh, I mean, we get, Neff gets discounts, so. Neff gets, well, how much should Neff pay for him? After discount, like two thousand a pop. <sighs> Back, hey man, a cheap item, very useful item. As Kez kind of slightly look, kind of taken aback, you see her kind of say, clock that, and then look over at Aldrin, who seems to pop a pipe up and go, "Yes, young man." I gesture to the very fat coin purse on my hip. Ah, congratulations. I'm proud that you have silver amongst your uh, coins, but we talking gold pieces here, young man. I don't deal in that shiny shit. Gold is also shiny. <laughs> Wait. Rend, I will uh, bend you over my knee Rend. like I did to Greg when he was a Rend. young man. Rend is rubbing his chin and thinking now. <laughs> I did it to Neff when he came through with an attitude. I will put you over my knee next. Don't you try me, young man. She waves her walking stick at you. Um, I don't say this out loud, but yes, indeed, silver is indeed shiny like gold. Um, okay, uh, maybe not be rude. Or to, uh, to the I think specified. I think Caleb has the most money out of all of you, because what? Oh yeah, he all, he's always had the more money out of all of us. He just got 2000 and he already had a bunch of money beforehand. Well, good thing I didn't say that out loud. Good thing I said it in my brain, Noggin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, she looks we back. All know that you're wealthy. She looks back to Kaz and goes, 
Now, will we be doing business, young man, or will I be uh, tossing you out to alongside uh, Rend here? Um, hey, Rend. Hey, hey Wall. <laughs> well, uh, first and off, an attitude um, problem, uh, young Rend. Yes. I. So, the to be honest, my motivations for coming here aren't just for. Youngin, you are too young for me. I am oh, it's too many years your senior. You are way too pretty for my tastings. <laughs> uh, no, uh, my apologies for the confusion. Uh, however, someone named uh, Tolbeer said I should come here. Oh, you mean the little bastard? Yeah, he told me I should come here. <laughs> uh, you guys weren't awake during the festivities, were you? No. The concert that happened last night, um, well, after all the skeletons had died down, things had quieted down. Everything went off. There was a, a big light in the sky, and some fella kept running around shouting something about some Greg dying, I don't know. Uh, some elven fella with that name came by my shop, asked for a, a qu something to protect himself. I thought he was going to go to get his kid. I watched him run out and stab 12 people. And he just went on a maniacal walk and a killing streak and just ran away. Um, it was the strangest things, the bodies got up and followed after him. Ah. Oh. So he was the necromancer. I don't know, I didn't see him cast a spell, but all I can say is I saw bodies get up and follow him after he struck him down. Well, I'm going to have to take care of him at some point. Good luck. Yeah, definitely not anytime soon, but... You might be able to contact a fella. He came through here earlier buying medals from me. Um, uh, his name was... Uh, I gave his name as Zilpip. You know, sweet kid. Uh, kept claiming to be older, but I could tell, smell it on him. He's still youngin'. Hmm. Can, I, can I roll history for how old this woman is? Sure. <laughs> I mean, she mentioned spanking Greg, so that gives me a really good... As a young man, yeah. It gives me a minimum. Uh, uh, 25. Um, looking at her, um, you'd guess, uh, by what you know about, the little you know about dragons and their aging process to compare, um, she has to be a, the equivalent of, uh, sim almost a great worm in age. That's terrifying. <laughs> um, and she is also, I will note, though, she is a kobold, like an actual full kobold, so... Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, what was that, Ultron? Dear God. <laughs> um, she look, um, She looks back at you, Kez, and goes, uh, It was a good fella to come through and buy things from me, but... Mm, I don't know where he uh, where he ran off to. He said he was going to do something with all the iron he bought. and I just assumed that it was uh, something... That he talked about his sweetheart, and I thought it was something for him or for them, but I guess not. Um, or maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe his sweetheart was killed in the streets. Uh, but that Tolvier fellow, I would avoid him if you get the ch if you can. He disappeared yeah, around some corners, and, um, I didn't see where he went. Uh, but I know he hasn't left the city, because I told the guards about him to look out. No one's reported him missing, or been found. And no guards have turned up dead, so... You know the guards aren't gonna find him. The ones left aren't good at their jobs. I watched one uh, uh, frost giant fella. He tried to stab some water with a pitchfork and explain to the other guard something about uh, how it worked for some other guy in a distant land. He's dead, DM. Why is he here? <laughs> Shut up. Don't worry about it. He's died like twice now, canonically. Oh my God. <laughs> um. All right. Um. So. Hey, um, Aldrin, I'm not gonna ask you to, like, like, pay all of this. I think we should definitely split the cost of this bag of holding. Ren's How gonna buy the buy a cloak of resistance. Okay. Um, as you say, or as you, as the two of them kind of huddle up and start talking about this for a moment, um, she kind of pulls out a cloak of resistance, um, and says, uh, there'll be 4,000 gold pieces for you. How much does Ren know about how haggling works with her specifically, with Neff coming here? Uh, that Neff has never won a haggling argument with a woman. It's never even gone a little down? No. No way. He has gotten charged more. I'll just pay the 4000 
She Thank smiles you. at you and seeing the realization <laughs> in your eyes and goes, Your commander tried to bargain that first, too. I got him up to 5,000 gold pieces on a 200 gold piece item. Oh, he looked as pale as a ti- or as any tiger could that day. It was quite a sight. Uh, but he didn't remember my day, my name uh, when I was a young adventurer as the bargainer. It seems like such a unnotable name, but at those times they were unnotable times. Um, it, it will act as a, a ma- it's a masterwork cloak I had crafted. Um, it should keep you somewhat safe uh, and capable on everything. It's a plus two uh, resist- cloak of resistance for your own notes. Okay. It was a plus one. I was about to say, I just got fucked. That's uh. Um, right. she looks back to Kez, though, and goes, Now that you two have, uh, had your little powwow, um, I have one for 10,000, one for 7,500, another for six, and one for 2,500. How are you? What are you feeling like buying? <sighs> Aldrin, how much I- are you willing to put, uh, for this... I can do. Just looking at it, I do not mind just paying for it all at once. Oh, okay. Uh, that actually, you know, dude. I will mention the lowest, the smallest one only carries fifteen pounds. Good no. It, oh no, sorry, two hundred fifty pounds. My apologies. Yeah, it weighs fifteen pounds. Yeah, my bad. Yep. I was about to say, like, fuck that. No, we're not spending pounds. Oh, yeah, my apologies. Yeah, no, uh, 250 pounds. Uh, but yeah, for your own... And you can only fit things that are 30 cubic feet in diameter, so do keep that in mind. No, the, the 30 is the... Yeah, it's the total size of the bag. Yeah. Oh, is it really? I thought that was the content yeah, individually. Oh, no, no, it is. It's a 30 cubic foot bag. Which does mean you can't shove, like, swords into this without stabbing the bag and breaking it through. Um, you, have to, you have to sheath weapons you put in and stuff or it'll break the bag. Yeah. Know? So, for you, Kez, I do have 12,000 copper, 4,900 silver, 2,903 gold pieces. What is that all in gold is the question. I think we counted it. It wasn't a lot for the copper. It was like a thousand and eighty-three or something well, like that. Well, I mean, you see, uh, he has enough in gold already to pay for it. He does. Because he has two thousand nine hundred and eighty-three in gold. Yep. Um. I mean. Yeah, but if you really want to front the cost, Aldrin, I mean that's fair. If. I mean, we could, like, split the cost of the party since it's going to be, you know, a party item. Yeah, the the 12,000 copper is only 120 gold uh, for feel of conversion here. The woman looks uh, to the three of you and goes, So, who's doing business? I will pay a larger, a larger point of the sum for not only just to help out, but also as an apology for the insistence on you going on a date with Zilpip. How about this, then? So, because the cost for the the cheapest bag is, what, you said, uh, 2500 Sure! Yeah, that sounds about right. And she just nods uh, to you. So, how about you pay... 1500 and me and uh, Ned will do 500 You could all also kick in 2000 and uh, get yourselves one of my Type 2s that hold up to 500 pounds worth of equipment. <laughs> As she kind of pulls out a slightly larger bag from the shelf and, like, demonstrates it uh, in front of you. I like this character. James should meet this character. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we have the uh, finances to purchase that one just yet. But oh, sweetheart, we do, I can smell the gold on you. Yes, but it's not for dropping all on a bag. Oh, but you have nowhere else to buy in this town. Think about it. All the shops are closed. Many of the merchants are dead. Unless you're planning to rob the good old folks of this uh, hair town. I think you should all kick in about 2,000 gold pieces equally for this item. Don't you, big fella, she looks to Ned. 
I ain't got that kind of money. Oh, Ned might get suckered in. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, Ned doesn't, Ned doesn't have that much money anymore. As she sniffs in the air and goes, I know you do somewhere. The donation bucket. She smells the donations. Run. I think you should all kick in a little bit of scratch and then think of it this way. You'll, you won't have to upgrade for a few more years. It's a great investment. Any new adventuring party could use it, and you might be able to get even a chopped up corpse in here of a decent sized creature. Then you don't have to worry about carrying it. Worst case, it's a good investment to sell back because you can always haggle with some younger adventurers to double up the price. Am I right? As she looks back at Kez. Fully trying to, like, uh, convince uh, and Kez into this dealing. Like any good merchant. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think I'm interested in purchasing anything today. Oh, you're gonna be a customer like that. Mm. Oh, well, you'll be back, and if you're not, the mercenaries will buy me out. I've only got a few more bags left anyways, but feel free to look around the shop if anything else catches your attention. And she kind of turns and goes back into the back room, lighting up the, the furnace. Let's go, gentlemen. I take my coin purse back. All right. As you uh, three kind of head out the, the front door, Rend, are you following after them, I assume? Yep. All right. Uh, you lock kind of head out into the middle of the street, um, finding yourself still yet again alone as much of the street seems to be deserted. Uh, I'm going to... I recommend we all go back and just uh, have a nice rest before we are to uh, depart on our week-long trek. I'm gonna go to one of the businesses. Oh? With the, with a unfortunately recently passed uh, merchant. Uh, there are many uh, businesses that look to have their windows cracked uh, and with uh, signs on their doors with like many uh, many legs uh, kind of burned into it and such. <laughs> right, right before Aldrin walks off, I'm like, hey, don't get caught. Please, for the love of God. If I get caught, I will at least deliver the package. Okay, very well. I don't want to hear anything of it. You will not oh, hear. I do. You can tell Ned if you want. Ned, <laughs> let's go. Ned, we, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go back to camp. Rend, if you want to follow us, uh, by all means. Rend uh, just kind of waves you off and uh, starts heading back towards it, some uh, down the street um, as they uh, turn. Rend is not being involved with this. Uh, they are not following you, Aldrin. I know. Ren is not being involved in yeah. this. Um, yeah, as uh, you, uh, Ned and Kez, as you head back uh, to the camp, the back to the mercenary area, um, you see the large um, tent that's been kind of set off to the side as um, a group uh, inside seem to kind of give you a bit of a look. Uh, you see a giant turtle kind of stick his head up for a minute, uh, stare at you a lot as you walk by, kind of mean mugging you. Um, as the you see just for a moment inside the tent what looks to be a large treasure chest and a few other shadows inside too hard to make out um, that seem to be as you hear the loud snoring as you ride past. Um, Tun Tun and Kesnock share a, a look of recognition, but they, they both wave it off like, no, no, there's, there's nothing similar about us. Uh, as uh, you two head to the camp, kind of setting up in one of the extra tents that's been set aside with you, uh, kind of getting, some, getting comfy on uh, some cushions that have been laid out and some food, enjoying the food that's been set out. Although, mostly rations, uh, like hardtack and uh, beef jerky, or just jerky in general. Um, the, uh, there are some sweets that have been set aside that um, some of the, uh, cr or the chef from the, uh, the mercenary company does bring in to kind of set aside for you a lot. A couple of what looks to be tangy-looking orange uh, like squares that have a, a sweet yet um, a bit of a, a tang to it every time you bite into it. Um, but as the two of you kind of relax, um, Ol uh, Aldrin, where, are you, uh, where do you head off? Uh, so I'm going to go, I want to say to the closest, uh, magic item shop. Okay. Uh, and I will look around first, 
you know. All right, so check. back into the kinky buckle. Yeah. Not to the kinky buckle. Uh, as you head down the 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 street, about two uh, buildings down, you see um, a place called, or what used to be called, the Golden Flame Magic Item Shop. Um, as the sign that is kind of slightly slanted, uh, the uh, very dwarf uh, that is clearly uh, having a giant chunk of uh, very thick glass stabbed through his abdomen coming out the other side um, looks to have been once the uh, the store owner by the dress the appearance of his dress uh, much of the inside looks to have been uh, slightly uh, charred but none of the uh, the items or anything have uh, been touched so I'm going to uh, obviously there's the front door and the windows is does it look like there's another way in that is not connected to the main street? Um, from the top of the house, you see, uh, on top of the, uh, the the shop itself, you do see uh, what looks to be two more windows on the second floor for a personal space. Um, Clint, realizing this is probably a house, um, you kind of looking around the side, and you guesstimate there's probably a back door. Um, as you kind of follow the house around the, to the back uh, alley, you see, you find a, a slightly... Um, a jarred back door that looks to have been kind of shoved it, or booted in at some point as the center of the door has been cracked. All right, I will go sneak in through the back door. As you kind of go inside, um, heading in, you see that a lot of what looks to be the uh, personal effects of um, the individual have been kind of ransacked, clothing, silks. Some of them look to have been torn and taken. Bits of jewelry that you can clearly see where gems and stuff were kind of set have been uh, stolen um, from uh, the gemstones being stolen from the uh, those settings. Um, much of the uh, actual metal um, around the smithy as you kind of investigate looks to have been completely cleaned out as the shelves look to be almost dustless, uh, giving you the idea that this happened recently. Um, you see a few signs of a, a struggle throughout the walls as scrape marks are kind of easily uh, defined from what looks to be a sword that had tried to cut through or cut at someone um, as a swing went wide. Um, kind of digging about one of the side, oh, you find a, a side room on the bottom floor, which as you open it, uh, the immediate strong stench of death uh, kind of hits you um, as you look in and see two corpses uh, completely laying in what looks to be a bed. Um, basically, uh, as you see the blanket on top looks to be soaked in blood. Um, as uh, you kind of look through, though, the, the rest of the shop's um, materials look to be there. Uh, this, as you look about, looks to have once been a, a wondrous item shop. A few items uh, kind of somewhat uh, kind of tossed about the room look to be uh, still set um, as you look around. Um, anything you're looking for in particular? So let's go with some, obviously some bag of holdings. Uh, off the top of my head, necklaces of fireballs. Uh, obviously I'll be taking the coin or any coin I can find. Uh, let's start with that. Okay. Um, as you look about, um, you find, or as you look for, um, any sort of, uh, items, uh, let's get a search check, see what you do, if you can, uh, pick up anything. Alright. Oh, I got a ping. First roll of the game is at 11. Um... Uh, as, uh, you look about, uh, as, uh, with a first kind of glance through, you find around 3,000 gold pieces, uh, worth of coins kind of scattered about the shop's floor. Um, a, uh, a gemstone, a, uh, very brightly colored, uh, comb that looks to have been designed for a dwarven beard of uh, sorts, uh, made of moonstones. Um, a very nice ring that looks to be kind of like, or in a display case seems to still be left there. Um, a, vi or a potion vial set uh, seems to be set off to the side along with a few other vials that have been cracked, but this one looks to be normal. Um, a scroll that seems to have been uh, kind of set into a casing as well is also looks to be uh, undamaged. Uh, I'll look at the scroll and see what it says. Uh, it is inside of a casing of like what looks to be glass inside. The, the scroll itself is not opened up. Um, it just has a seal and a twine that seems to hold it together. There is no sign or any markings that seem to show what the uh, spell or what the um, uh, scroll is. Oh, yeah. um, are, are the potions labeled? Uh, nope. Alright. Uh... 
containments or the containers that they're in, does it look like it needs a key to unlock, or can they just be open? As you look around at the display case um, and kind of looking, moving your hand around it, uh, you notice the glass looks to be just easily picked up straight off the uh, the object. There is no key, no lock, or anything of the sort. Uh, though something kind of starts to sit with you, funny, as you start to think, looking at this. Uh, give me a let's say a general intelligence check. Oh, I already. I already get the feeling that this is attached to an alarm, so even oh, opening is going to trigger it. Oh, give me an intelligence check. You'll you'll understand. Yeah. Uh, fourteen. You do get the not only the revelation of some sort of alarm, but something else catches your attention as you think about this. It's too there's too many items lying about that are a decent value. As you count roughly, looking at the the price tag for the ring, that's two thousand gold piece ring. Potions 150 gold pieces as a starting value, as has a plus next to it. The Moonstone Comb, as you look about, um, look to eventually been uh, priced at 3,000 gold pieces. Someone came through here and stole all the iron, or no iron, but all the uh, metal bars, but didn't take any of the valuables. Something in your head's not adding up to you as you look about. So it's either they had a specific reason for going only for the iron or they're coming back I'm you... gonna I'm gonna spend as little time as I can in here and just go for the bag of holding a cloak of resistance necklaces you... of fireballs and potions you don't find any of those items with your first search check you can try another search check to see if you find anything I will try again all right, uh, let's uh, go ahead and see what you got. Um, I will specify if it, uh, for the record, I am not just walking around here. I am trying to be as quiet as possible. No, no, I know. I understand. You're still, you're, as far as it goes, you'll still, you'll have you move silently and hide if, uh, if you notice someone coming and looking for you specifically, or if there's someone looking around. Uh, well, even worse, another 11. All right. Uh, as you look about, you find about 80 more platinum pieces and uh, some bits of coral kind of lying on the ground that uh, you'd probably price at about 80 gold pieces max. Okay. Um... I will say there's a lot of rubbish on the ground. There's uh, bits of torn up wood. This place is not in good shape. As you even looking up can see the um, ceiling rather and floor that was above uh, you has completely caved in um, from above. Looking and seeing the many amber and burn marks uh, that show. I'm going to try one more time and if I fail I'm going to leave this store. Okay, give me another one. I'm leaving the store. I got a seven. A seven? Uh, you find um, about uh, digging through a pile, you start kind of looking through. You find another, uh, a freshwater pearl that uh, you kind of look at it. It's small, kind of tossing off to the side. Not really, it really is thing. It's not really worth that much overall. And as you kind of dig through get more, you find a bit of cloth that's slightly got a gold like color might sell for something but there's not there's not enough in here to make it even worth your time to walk away with that's maybe 100 gold pieces worth of two, uh, between the two items all right so i will very quickly go to the uh lift the casing off of the scroll and the ring okay take both of those and leave through the back door all right. Um, as you rush over, grabbing the ring and the um, scroll, uh, you disappear around uh, around the corner with the item. Uh, no one seems to even notice as you take off with it. Um, you disappear as you disappear around or into the uh, alleyway. I eventually, I assume, eventually making it back to the uh, the mercenary quarters to kind of go and meet up with your party. Uh, I'm going to hit up one more store to see if I can find anything out there and have better luck. Okay. Uh, as you head out of into the main street, start looking about, you do see Rend come walking down the main road. Um, a large wagon behind him that he seems to be pulling full of potions, uh, bits of armor, uh, 
gold coins, chests full of gemstones, a couple, a barrel full of weapon, different weapons. Um, as he comes kind of walking past you as he sees you. Living my best life, living my best life. Oh, hey, Aldrin, having a great time. Is it to keep walking? Uh, if you have any, or I will say a bit quieter. If you have anyone that's on the more stealthy side, uh. Why is yep. why did I forget the name already? What? Aldrin drawing a blank looks at you for a second. Of the there... out of the shop or of the Yeah, the name of the shop. Which one? Oh Golden The Golden Flame Magic Item Shop, the one you were just in? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. If you have any, if there's anyone on the stealthier side in the mercenary core with you, um the Golden Fire uh, magic shop actually has quite a lot of items left over. Um, oh, no, that we probably get killed for that. Yeah. Probably, that's why it's somewhat stealthier. They can make it in and out. Because if any items are left, they're either cursed, defective, or... Uh... Yeah. Kes knock in the distance, uh, saying, uh, with, uh, uh, thinking to himself, I told you so. It's not worth <laughs> it. I can get better items elsewhere. It's why I didn't, that's why I went somewhere else. Well, where did you go? One of the two inns that got destroyed. I mean, you saw earlier, it was full of goods and no one was taking it, and it's, uh... Normal armor since Foxy's gonna be cursed, so... <laughs> and I'll just keep walking to the, uh, to the mercenary quarters. Yeah. As you kind of head on uh, past Aldrin, leaving him there with his, uh, the ring and scroll kind of tossed it, or hiding in his sack, um, Aldrin, you watch as many of the quest rewards for the quests on that board uh, were in that container, uh, as you realize, thinking back on the quests that you were looking at with uh, Kez and Ned earlier, um, and seeing most of them uh, seem to be contained in that uh, wagon that uh, Rend is walking away with. Yep. Uh, Alright, what would you like to do, Ojin? Are you heading back, or are you still going to try and find another shop? Uh, I'll go to one of the abandoned taverns. All right, as you turn back, heading up the, the main street, um, it takes you another hour. Uh, as your party does start to, I imagine, get slightly concerned that you're gone, uh, by the time Red returns, um, you find yourself looking throughout uh, the uh, two taverns. Uh, the one tavern itself, or rather, Adventure and Guild, completely destroyed down to nothing but its uh, foundation. Um However, you do see a strange table, uh, like wooden table and chair, just kind of sat there in the middle of this like completely destroyed building or uh, gone building. Um, across the street, you do see the other uh, place that uh, you realize Rend was talking about, as you see the kicked-in door um, and the mini shelves now cleared from the uh, the, the adventuring guild's um, uh, potion racks um, at the back. Uh, as well as almost their entire herb, oh, their entire set of herbs, uh, many of the weapons in the barrels. Though, as you look about, the dull ones seem to still be in there. Um, the lesser quality and cracked uh, training blades seem to have been left alone. But as you go looking about the uh, building, um, popping through each door, you find that most of the, it looks like every room's been completely cleaned out. There's not an item that's worth anything above twenty five gold pieces left behind. As you look through, um, finding a few small javelins here and there, and some so, uh, some training blade swords. Um, there's not. There doesn't seem to be anything else. You can give me a search check if you want to look for something more specific, but that's what you get when you first look around. Uh, I mean, I doubt there's going to be anything really can left. Roll but... above an eleven. I will still roll. Uh, All right. Let's see. let's see what you got, good sir. I did roll above level eleven. I got a fifteen. A oh, fifteen. Um, as you look about, kind of digging through, uh, you do find a small uh piece of wood that seems to, as you step on, make a strange creak, and as you kind of. Noticing it, uh, kind of kick at it a bit, testing it, and as you kind of finally realize the board seems to not actually properly be attached, you pick it up, finding finding a small chest full of about, uh, well, a lot of gems and about six thousand gold pieces. Um, I'm gonna post the gems. There you go. Dear God. Um, and a small little ornate chest that you'd value it maybe like. 10, 15 gold. It'd be pr it's pretty enough to probably send off if you wanted to uh, as a gift. 
uh, I will pocket all of that. All right. I will mention the carved heart and the silver ear, where they uh, they would be miniature, like as if like small pieces of jewelry. These are all jewelry pieces, instead uh, as far as note goes. Um, yeah, as you kind of pocket the uh, the group of uh, gems, uh, do you keep the chest, or are you gonna leave the chest behind? Um, the ornate chest. Yeah. Uh, I'll take that with. Okay. Yeah, as you pocket that as well, um, kind of uh, putting the board back down as if you weren't here, um, and turning back outside the building, realizing you're probably not going to find much better than that. Um, yeah, unless you want to try again, that, but that's all you find. Uh, no, I'll head back to the camp now. Okay. As you uh, kind of head back, um, Kez and Ned, you are being informed that uh, of exactly how the plan will be going off, at what point you guys will be sent out, uh, basically given a uh, rundown of the troops, which you'll get the day of the session, um, and roughly what the troops should be like that you'll be uh, having to deal with around the uh, armory. Um, but you get a full rundown as you two sit in the tent uh, after uh, one of Neff's uh, kind of one of the next lesser uh, lycanthropes comes through, uh, kind of explaining, walking through the entire thing for you lot in uh, perfect and clear of giant. Um, as though, uh, though, as uh, uh, you see Uldren kind of coming in through the tent after being guided here. Um, Uldren, you see Randolph to the distance talking to Neff with a large uh, chest or large wagon full of goods. Um, as the two seem to be talking about something, um, you turn heading towards uh, the tent itself, where you see your two party mates already sitting in there. Um, Dom seemingly uh, kind of walking up a few feet, uh, suddenly almost out of nowhere off to the side of you as he kind of enters in, sits down on one of the pillows, not even saying a word, and just smiles as he grabs one of the little orange tangy cakes and starts chewing, or kind of starts chewing on it. Uh, I acknowledge Dom now, no. Uh, so, all right, cool. All right, have a good night, everybody. As he just turns and lays down. I'm going to count up everything and uh, try to split it up evenly for the party. Okay. As you start kind of splitting up the uh, the, the the value of the items uh, between the group, are you keeping the ring and the um, <coughs> um scroll? Uh, I will hold on to it, though I will be keeping it away from the party. Okay. Um, I would like to get it at least identified to know what they were. Okay. All right. As uh, you lot kind of start to sit around the camp, um, the uh, uh, a couple of mercenaries come by um, here and there to check on you lot. But as the night goes, or as the rest of the day goes on, uh, you lot kind of relax, kick back, um, and uh, though someone or a player or player, a uh, mercenary does come by and confirm with identify. Um, for you, uh, Aldrin, uh, you are told that the ring itself is a ring of protection plus one, and the scroll itself is a scroll of unseen servant. Okay. Um, but as you lot kind of are sat together, uh, relaxing, uh, Keznox light snoring, Dom eating and enjoying themselves, uh, Ned, what are you, uh, kind of doing during, uh, your downtime here? Uh, Ned also just crawls out and goes to sleep. Alright, yeah, as you turn laying down, um, Aldrin starting to kind of play with, uh, the gems and, uh, jewelry, uh, amongst the stuff and splitting it up between the four of you. Um, we're gonna, we'll call session there as we'll come back tomorrow, or next session with you lot, uh, kind of waking up for getting ready to move out with the rest of the, or uh, the rest of the vanguard. We thank you all for watching, we hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time.